Croft UK Radio and North Highlands and Islands Radio Morning Show with Rebecca Pickles and the blow-up character Twelvis Pickles. Also the station manager Rascal the Dog, the political reporter Scruffy the Dog and the show producer Izzy the Dog. NHIR.co.uk and CroftUKRadio.co.uk Good morning, it's Monday, nine o'clock, it's the 19th of March. Oh, yes. Uh, clocks go forward this weekend. Mm. We were working it out yesterday, weren't we? We are saying, uh, when do they go forward? Uh, it's, it's next Saturday. This is true. Yes, British summertime will begin. Although you wouldn't think that looking at the news this morning, would you? Mm. There's been quite a hoo-ha going on in England, hasn't there? This is certainly right, yes. Mm. I couldn't believe it, even Bournemouth have had snow. What? What's going on? That must be the end of the world down there. Everything shuts when they get a bit of a snowflake, <laughs> don't they? Yeah. Yes, nice, right, yes. Uh, thank you very much to Peter Hayes as well for the breakfast show this yeah, morning. Yeah, a good show for you. Um, Twelve Dis Pickles is here. Uh, um, yes. yes, he is here, yes. Good morning to Twelve Dis Pickles. I am around. You're here then? I am, yeah, I made it. Yeah, mm. uh, jolly good stuff then, yes. I made it all the morning. Ooh. Mm, yes. Uh, Tortoise Pickles is a blow-up character and not real. He's called Tortoise Pickles because he's got 12 desks. Uh, mind you, there's quite a bit of room still left in the studio. You're not planning on expanding, are you? Well, I did think about it, yeah. I thought you might, mm. yeah. Mm. I put a drums in that corner. That'd be quite interesting. Is that where the violinists play all the bedding music? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it is good morning to the staff of Croft UK Radio Morning Show. We've got about, well, about three and a half thousand now, haven't we? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. uh, thanks very much for that. Uh, the station manager and the boss, Rascal the Dog, he's a white poodle, self-titled Cock of the North. Do you want to just say good morning, Rascal the Dog? Mm, uh, good morning, Rascal the Dog. Yeah, he'll be here later with his rascal fatlets. Uh, black and grey with a beard. Uh, the show chef, Scruffy the dog. Uh, good morning to Scruffy the dog. Oh, uh, yes, uh, uh, good morning to me. Uh, I'll be doing my scruffles, truffles later. Yeah, certainly will be. And also hello to the Jack Russell, Izzy the dog, who's the producer of the show. Oh, good morning, I'm Izzy the dog. Yes, you are lovely. Wonderful. Right, news is next. Uh, but before that, it's back to desk three, then Tortoise Pickles. Okay, okay, then. Um, let's have a little bit of uh, Karma Chameleon from the old culture club. The news with Rebecca Pickles and the blow up character 12 Desk Pickles on nhir.co.uk and croftukradio.co.uk. Monday, yes, it's seven minutes past nine, it's the 19th of March, yes, right, news. That it is news, oh. Yes, well he's done it, hasn't he? He has, yes, yes. massively. Yes, mm. Putin, mm. he's going to carry on for another six years. Yes, 75% at the moment, um, <laughs> there is some sort of blatant um, ballot boxing cheating uh, there, which would tend to call I2 type of thing, but... Um, the, the main people are always saying that even without that, he'd have one hand down anyway. Hmm, yeah. Uh, I wonder if Theresa May wishes she'd got the same thing as um, Putin probably did. Hmm. And I wonder if it went in his favour as well because of what's all going on at the moment. So they thought, I oh, know, we'll stick by you, we'll vote for you. Yeah. Yes, well, then we are. Okay, then. Well, hmm, <clears throat> yes, this is my favourite. He's done it. Good for him, don't he you think, Tortoise Pickles? Oh, definitely, yeah. He's yeah. back. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning to who? Tortoise Pickles. Uh, David. No. George. George! <laughs> yeah. I just thought I'd put David's name he, into the pot there just for a change. Uh, yeah, he's been oot and a boot. Oot and a boot. With Tony Blair mm. on an international education conference. This was in Dubai. Yes. Yes. Uh, George says hard Brexiteers are dragged the Conservatives to the right, whilst Jeremy Corbyn has moved Labour to the left. 
Uh, George says he doesn't believe that a moderate pro-business and socially liberal international part of the British people has disappeared. Really? Yeah, he says they've got a lot to do to build bridges to get back into the centre again. So, oh, no, oh, oh dear, right, yes. Uh, Todd's pickles, of course, I'm not the sort, am I? To no, 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 no. No, I would never dream of it. To play an interview from George oh, dear, and record. Are you? Yes, you're going to do it, are you? I can do. Do you want me to do it? Uh, but I, 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 I look to you. Yes. Mm, I In might the middle of the news, let's play the interview. <laughs> yeah. I might stick it on later. We'll see. Oh, very good. Yes. So, oh, mm. so, well, it'll be fun, won't it? Right, OK. It is good morning again to Brexit. A call to extend the period of the UK for leaving the EU if more time is needed to agree a UK-EU trade deal. They've got a split in the Commons Committee. It says it's difficult to see how trade and other agreements can be negotiated in time. Mm-hmm. That's the chairman, Hillary Benn. Mm-hmm. Yes, although he says, I'm not going to try and delay Brexit indefinitely, but we think we need more time. Mm-hmm. Mm. That's not all of them are actually very happy about that. I think, oh dear, here we go again, some of them are saying. So, well, right, um, okay then, um, other stuff in the news then this morning. Oh, um, Ant, whatever his name is, yes. Luck Partlin. Been a silly boy. Yep, yeah, he's been out for drink driving. Mm. Had a bit of an accident over the weekend. Yeah, it's not so much that he was drink driving, of course, or had the accident, but he's um, apparently hurt a couple of people in the, uh, in the drink show as well, which is... Um, well, it's not the best idea to go out drinking and driving. Now, this allegedly happened a couple of hours after he'd finished the uh, the Saturday takeaway show as well, so... Uh, oh, well, yes. Uh, right, OK, then Boris Johnson has defended a £160,000 donation made to the Conservatives by a former Russian minister's wife in return for a tennis match with him. Well, let's face it, if oh, somebody it's... give you £160 million and say, well, you're going to give tennis with me, would he give it back? No. No. Uh, no. This was happening in 2014, and David Cameron was in it as well. Hmm. What was he the net? Eh? What was he the net? Probably. I have no idea. Yes. Mm. So there's a tennis match against Boris and David Cameron was among items auctioned off at the Conservative Party Summer Auction. Ball in the summer of 2014. True. I didn't know they were auctioning him off. I missed one oh, there, they didn't I? Twelve the pickles. Off every year. Oh, do they? Do you have to give him back afterwards? Yes. Oh. oh. Yeah, and your life savings. Oh, it's not quite so fun, is it, really? <laughs> well, you could always put him in the cellar and lock the door. Well, you could, yeah. That would work. Then again, you'd probably get a, a, an I episode... It depends, though. Yeah, would you really want to be locked up with your mother? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is good morning to my mother who's in the cellar. Uh, we have some strange people in our cellar, don't we? We do, yes. Yes. Mm. Right, maximum stake for fixed odds betting terminal should be cut to £30 or less as a gambling commission. That's in the news this morning as well. <laughs> yes. Right, um, international experts are due in the UK to assess the type of ner- nerve agent used by poison that, um, well, supposedly they're critically ill in hospital. Oh. I think a lot of people are wondering now, really, though, aren't they? Are they really still in hospital? Are I they really know, still? In... Yes, yeah, some uh, big questions coming out about it with very no answers at all. And they still haven't given them, have they? Yeah. No. Mm. Right. Uh, anything on desk one for the news on your side? Uh, Todd Pickles. Yeah, right. Who do you reckon may have stole the uh, the show out of the Fashion Week? Jules. Um, no. Oh. Um, me mother. No. David Cameron. No. It was a person called, well, it's a thing called Little Lola Sunshine. No. Oh, bless. Um, she's absolutely gorgeous. She, she's um, got several different attires from wedding dresses to lovely mock fur. Is it wraps. a dog? Yes. <laughs> I thought it was going to be a dog. Yes, yes. Okay. It's a little Yorkie Terrier. Oh, lovely. She looks absolutely lovely. The look on her face is fantastic. Not quite a show about dressing a dog up. Yourself, no, but, that's um, my only thing, really. Yeah, though. but mm. she does seem to be enjoying it, I must admit. Hmm. Oh. But, uh, yeah, she, she stole the hearts of everybody, apparently, at uh, the Fashion Month Fashion Week show. Oh, 
Oh, oh, well, nice, isn't it? She, apparently, it was said that she, um, she had more selfies taken of her than any other person attending. Oh, great. Yeah, I'm sure she did. Yeah. Yes. I, was like, I, I can't quite see Izzy the dog somehow doing something like that, can you? I no, think well, she... she'd probably eat the fur wraps to start with. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure she would. Right. Uh, all homes in Scotland are set to have a minimum number of smoke alarms after a 30-year law is amended. <laughs> mm. Yeah, wonderful. I know. We've, we've got a very annoying smoke alarm in the dining room, we haven't we? Have. Must have never moved into a house which had so many smoke alarms in it. Everywhere you went, there was a smoke alarm, if not two. Yes. It's strange, very strange. They're Every annoying. door has locks on as well, which is even more strange. <laughs> Me mother's been here. Mm. Yeah. Oh, it's it's that thing, yeah, every now and then, when it makes that beeping sound, you know, Beep. when, when the batteries need to be changed. Yes. It's been running for over a year now, hasn't it, I that know, beeping yeah, sound? Yeah. It always sounds as if the phone's about to go off. I know, because it's the same sound. <laughs> it's horrible, because it's, it's the mother phone as well. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh. Right. Uh, anyway, in Scotland, then, changes to the Housing Scotland Act are being made after the Grenfell Tower blaze. Mm. As it says, the most rigorous standards are applied to new built and private rented housing, but when the law is updated, the requirement for ceiling-mounted smoke and heat alarms will be applied to all homes in Scotland. Well, if you're in a house and you're living... How are they going to know whether you've got it or not? Are they gonna? Is, are the police gonna start coming into your house to make sure you got enough smoke alarms? I doubt it. No. I don't know how they're gonna be able to enforce that one. To be honest, that seems it's a bit strange. Isn't it? Term, oh, it right certainly now. is. Yes, well, that's uh, that's Scotland for you, isn't it? Have a look yes. at all this. Oh, yes. Oh, uh, National Lottery then. Yeah. Camelot is warned of a low-level cyber attack that affected 150 customer accounts. Mm-hmm. It's asked all of its customers to change the passwords on their accounts as a precaution. They gain credential uh, glee. Oh. They use credential gleaned from a list circulated on the internet to get into the accounts. Now that's new on me because I didn't even know if you do the national lottery, you can have an account online. Yes, you can do it online. I never knew that. Oh yes. It just shows how often we've done the lottery. We I've haven't never done, done it. it. No, no, I don't think I've ever done it either. Cause I can remember it starting, I think it was around 1994, mm-hmm. roughly. Was it Noel Edmonds or something? Oh, I have no idea, I couldn't tell you. Mm. I had absolutely no interest at all in the National Lottery. I never have done, never will do. No. Not until it's a different company that do it. What about if it was run by George? <laughs> I don't even know what's interesting in it. Yeah. Yeah. Right, they uh, give money to charity when they were in government. Let yeah. alone when to go. Well, they play tennis matches, auction themselves off. Themselves, yes. Right. Yep. Mm. Now, here's a new thing. Because of the iPads and children starting to use these sort of things from the age of two onwards, two, it's saying... Two years old, be given an iPad to play with. Weird world we live in. Weird world. Well, a teacher has been out saying that children coming into school that have been given a pencil, a lot of them are no longer able to hold it because they don't have the fundamental movement skills because instead of learning to write and holding a pencil before Mm. they start school, they're just on the iPads and phones. I can well believe that, yeah. It says, yes, because you need, when you grip a pencil and move it, they're saying you need strong control of the fine muscles in your fingers, but a lot of these children now haven't had the opportunity to develop this. Mm-hmm. You know what? I do want to, I hope I'm wrong, but how long is it going to be, do you think, till handwriting goes out completely and it's no longer taught? Well, I'm not necessarily it's going out steadily anyway, isn't it? I mean, ask a kid nowadays what a real ink pen is, and now I pretend it'll just sort of look at you and it's a biro, ballpoint. Oh, I don't know. Can you get fart book on that? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Where's the on switch? Ah, that's, anyway, that's uh, some of the stuff in the uh, news this morning. Is there anything there that you might have on desk two, then? What the pickles? Hmm, well, um, what are basically the, the sayings that absolutely drive you mad? Sayings that drive you mad. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yeah. I'm with you on that. Mm. You know, like, like when somebody sits there and says, um, oh, this is a safe haven. 
safe haven. Yeah. Mm, is that for tax laundering, do you oh, mean, and yeah, stuff like that? Like that. Yeah, yeah, but, mm. but technically, isn't anything which is a haven safe? Well, I suppose so. So, so why can't it safe haven? Weird, weird, weird. Yes. I don't know. Um... <laughs> I mean, other thing, uh, people tend to like starting centres off nowadays with, with the word literally. Oh, they do? You know, but, mm. but why? Well, it's not used in the right context sometimes now. No, this is probably right. Yeah, that's they literally, where the thing goes. They literally turned into a gorilla. It's not really actually the, the definition of literally. No, Unless no. someone actually did turn into a gorilla. I suppose well, yes. it's possible if they don't shave. And True. Uh, yeah, we go be... back in direction of evolution, but in the reverse. And yes. Mm. Anyway, uh, yes. Now, I do have to admit, one of my pet ones is, is this one. I hate it. I think it's absolutely awful when somebody says it. And that's guys. Hmm. When they sit there and they look at me and say, oh, you guys, and, and things like that, I hate it. I just cannot stand that word. No. But what also gets me is, why do people say those guys over there, when you turn around, it's a group of women? That does not make sense. No. No. Hmm. And what about window in my diary? Uh, my web diary ain't got any glass in it. Ah, uh, well, uh, no. Well, you haven't got any windows in your diary anyway, because most of your <laughs> diary is taken yeah. up by hospital appointments. Yeah, I just get one printed by the NHS every year, and it's got every day not available. Yeah. Yeah. Um. The, 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 all these years and weird things and things like that. What about a free gift? Free gift? Yeah. Oh, I see what you mean. Yes, a gift would be free anyway, so, so to totally say a free correct, gift. Yes. yes, I understand what you're saying, yes. Mm. Mm. Yes, yes. Um, uncharted territory. Um, that's what Nicola Sturgeon used to enjoy using that terminology. She about, certainly did, yes. About yes. after the EU referendum. Yeah, so if it's yeah. uncharted, how do you know it's there? Well, yes, and you just sort of picture it, don't you, with a, a compass and a map with a parrot on her shoulder mm. trying to find this uncharted territory that she can't find. Yeah. yeah. I mean, a lot of these scenes remind me of having to do um, essays in the top of school where they sit there and say, this essay has to be 5,000 words long. Mm. And you sit there and you think, how can I make these things along with well, it? Milk it up, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Know, yeah. A little bit like at this moment in time. Hmm. Which technically means now. Now. Hmm. It's, it's either do you use word efficiency or do you waffle is, <laughs> is mostly what it means, doesn't it? Hmm. Yes. Uh, another annoying thing, then. You know what I mean. Oh, <laughs> yes, yeah. If you knew what they mean, then you wouldn't be asking them, would you? Hmm, no. Yeah. Um, do you know what at the beginning of every sentence? Uh, that is very true, yes, yes. At the end of the day... Mm. Yes, well, that comes naturally. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yes. What about people that start a sentence off with the word so? Yeah. Well, again, you could go to area variations on that, couldn't you? Because it's a little bit like um, when I first moved to Middlesbrough, I couldn't understand the neighbour across the road from us. Simply because every time she spoke, and every sentence she started, she started with the word like her. Like her? Yeah. L I C no L I K E R. Yes. Oh. Yeah. And everywhere, every sentence started with like her. But the really only fact was it also finished with it. Oh, nice. So yeah. when she started a second sentence in a phrase, it would be like her, like her. Because oh. obviously when you're speaking you don't say like her, full stop, like her. Yeah. And and yeah. apparently it's it's what a lot of people up there talk like. And they all say, like. But she just sort of elongated it slightly, so everything was like her. Right. And it was weird, so weird to listen to her talk. You had to sort of close your ears off from the first and the last word of the sentence. Otherwise, well, you couldn't make sense of anything. No, I can understand that, yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah. You know, it, yeah. it's like other um, colloquialisms and stuff like that. If if you go up to, oh, what, Sheffield, Rotherham area, it's all duck. You know, duck this, duck that, duck the other. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Are you all right, duck? Hi. I get rather quackers then. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, but uh, I mean, where I come from, it was all love. Hmm. hmm. Where I come from, it's all money. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here's some more then. Um, let's be absolutely clear. Yes, yeah. Well, no, unless you, of course, you're a politician, and then let's not be absolutely clear about anything. Mm. Let's really fuffle it up. This is important. Oh, I know somebody who wants to keep saying that. Yes. Um, uh, to be honest is another one that people <laughs> can be a little bit uh, annoyed of. Uh, basically is another word. That's true, yes. yes. Yeah. It's of paramount importance. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Um, and uh, your call is important to us. Mm. I always say that every time I answer the phone. Oh, this is true. Yeah, then you put the phone down. I yeah. normally do, yeah. People that say back in the day, what day? Yes, that Which is also day? true. Yes, yes. Mm. Well, no, like I said. Like I said? Mm. Normally used, of course, at the start of a sentence that does not contain anything which has already been stated. Mm, all right. Two other ones were uh, chillax. Uh, that comes out a lot. Yes. And guesstimate is another one that started as well that some Technically, people find. No, a little strange actually because I know where the, the, the phrase guesstimate came from. George! No, it's oh. way back before that. Mm. <clears throat> it's when you use the phone up for an estimate or when you get people around to do an estimate for work. Mm, yeah. Right now, if, let's say for instance, you are having a new front door and so you phone a joint up and say, could you give me an estimate please for the front door? They would come down and say, ah, oh, right, fine, yeah, 300 quid. OK, fine, do it. They'd turn off on the way, they'd get the front door, come down, put the door on, sit there, present you with a bill, 450 pounds. Hmm. So hang on a minute, your estimate was 300. Well, yes, sir, that's why it's called an estimate. Oh, I see. Oh, uh, right. I thought that was how much it was going to cost. Well, it, it would have cost 300 pounds if I'd have done it there and then that second, and I had a door ready on the van. Right. And I had the tools, and I had the weather, and I had this, and I had that. But I didn't. And then when I got there, the suppliers were charging me an extra 25% for the doors or whatever, and, and so forth. And so it's, it's 450 quid. Sorry. The word guesstimate appeared for the estimate. Because people couldn't understand the difference between an estimate and a quote. Oh, right. So, so they, yeah. they brought the word guesstimate in. Because that way, he starts it off. With the correct terminology, well, I guess it's going to cost this much. But is in it now? Oh, that's where it's come from then. Yeah, and that's where the word mm. guesstimate originally. Is that now an official word? It is an official word. Yes, you can actually get a guesstimate form from a company. That's funny, isn't it? You'll also, the, yeah. Yeah, you mm. also notice at times companies use it on the TV and, and if they sit there and say, "Well, how long do you think uh, the percentage rate is going to be? Zero point zero five percent." And you have people say, well, as a guesstimate, we hope it's no longer than midsummer or autumn. Mmm, lovely. Meaning that they haven't really got a clue, it's just a, a, well, a rough guess. It'll be interesting to see if the Governor of the Bank of England, then Mark Carney, <laughs> what he gets up to, because he's due to announce the interest rates again shortly. He is, yeah, I'll write another letter, whichever. <laughs> yeah, lovely, yes, yeah, wonderful. Right, OK, then, um, Twitter's Pickles, uh, would you like now to float back to desk three? I could manage that as well, I can Yes, let's have a little bit of um, oh, Blondie and Colby. From the north of Scotland, this is Croft UK Radio and North Highlands and Islands Radio Morning Show with Rebecca Pickles, the blow-up character 12 Desk Pickles, the station manager, Rascal the Dog, the political reporter, Scruffy the Dog, and the show producer, Izzy the Dog. Mondays to Fridays, 9am to 12pm, nhir.co.uk and croftukradio.co.uk. <laughs> Well, weather's still bad yeah. in certain parts of the UK. Uh, up here on the north coast of Scotland, we've had sunshine. We certainly have. It's beautiful. Well, it was. Ha. Oh, it's gone. Yep. Yeah. Uh, on it, this occasion, you were wrong. I was wrong. Well, yeah, it's gone back to its default weather, as I call it. It's uh, uh, grey, yes. raining. Mm. Mm, never mind. Um, the A66 in the northeast was shut, but uh, thanks to Ron in Washington for letting us know, it's now opened. But it's going to still carry on then for a lot of the UK for the rest of the day today. That says the whole of England and parts of Wales and Scotland have been warned of ice and light snow. 
after wintry showers have caused a lot of disruption. A lot of it is um, down in the southeast, actually, isn't it? Yes. So, not southeast, sorry, southwest. Southwest, southwest Britain. Yes. Um, Devon has got it bad. Uh, the A30, they're having problems as well. Sorry, the. Um... In the Devon area, southwest, the A30. To the A. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh, it is good morning to Rascal, the dog who loves the number three. Oh, uh, three! Mm. Two! Mm. One! Oh, cock! Rascal, yeah. language! Yeah. Oh, dear. To top gear. I know, yeah, so, uh, so if, you, if you're in a boot oh, and you've top got... Oh, I must have it. Not the new crap huh? thing on BBC Two. Sorry, say that in English. Old oh, top gear. The proper top gear. Not the mocked up version which they're putting on BBC Two at the moment. Oh, the, oh, the mocked up version they're mm. putting on BBC Two at the moment of Top Gear. That's what you're on about, isn't it? Yeah, viewing figures have dropped drastically on that. Most of have they? Day. Yes, more oh. about it later. Okay then, right. And it is uh, well in Scotland then. The Highland Games. Yeah, that's the lever. Oh yeah, you've read it then. No. no. Oh, haven't you? No. Oh, I missed that. Well, yeah. I missed it. Well, they're going to be taught in schools. Oh, super. Now, why don't I go back to school? What a great idea. Well, tossing the caber, like you've just said. Tug of war. Yeah, I can do double maths today. I can go toss the caber. They're going to be taught in um, Caithness. That's th- Ooh, just up the road. It is. It's Thurso High School, Wick High School and Far Secondary School. Hang on, mate. All them schools are right close to the road. Are they? Hmm. I, I don't know, I can't remember where they are. I know uh, our nearest local town is Thurso, but yeah. uh, I didn't realise it was near the road. Yeah, we'll be trundling down the road, mm. minding our own business, come to the 20 mile an hour area of the school. Yes. And I tell you, Rock Paul's going to come through the window. We probably will. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> well, you won't be saying that if it went through your window. No, true. No. Well, well, right, yes. Hey, Jimmy, is this yours? Pardon? Sat there saying, hey, Jimmy, is this yours? Right. Yes, it probably will be as you give them an invoice at the same time for your windscreen. Yes, yeah, they'll stand there near the fence saying, no, 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 we can do it. No. It were him. Yeah, right. Yes, the Scottish Land Fund has announced an award of up to £4.4 million to a community bid to buy the island of Ulva and also land on the neighbouring Isle of Mull. That seems that, to be. I thought that was sold a couple of years ago. Well, I don't know, but um, that's what they're doing now. They're actually giving the award of 4.4 million to them cool. now. Mm. Yeah, they have 20 or more people that live actually on Olva, and they want to write, bring it up to about 50 people. That's correct, yes, yeah. Mm. They had a, a big mm. advertising campaign, um, I think it was towards the end of last year, for uh, getting people over there. There was, you're right. Mm. You, you see it every now and then, don't you? Mm. It, it comes out on the news that, oh, there's a job on offer and it's like some kind of massive farm Ooh, with yes. about 10 million sheep. Mm. And they say, we're looking for somebody to work here. Aye. Yes. Mm. Well, um, right, um, to the pickles. And, uh, do you have anything there on desk nine or are you still going through your, your diary? Mm. No, 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 no. Yeah, no. Yeah. You've got quite a lot of stuff in your diary at the moment, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, I'm not normally start off with this here thing, NHS. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. Um, all right, what well, about... Well, on average, we need to spend more than £18,000 and four and a half years working on our home before we can consider it perfect. Oh, yes! Yes, I thought of you when I read that. Did you indeed? Oh, thank you. Certainly did. Yeah, you can uh, install a new kitchen, bathroom, laying new carpets or flooring, and building a conservatory or an extension arm on the top improvements we want to do to our homes. There's only one on that list I haven't done yet. Does it mention getting rid of mice? No. Right, fair enough then, yeah. Now, apparently just 9% of homeowners currently consider their home to be perfect with 55% saying they have a long to-do list of improvements and changes they would like to get done. How can you call your home perfect? Because no matter what you do to it, it's never going to be perfect. No, I know. No. Yeah, you're never going to sit there, are you, at the front of your house with the camera and saying, right, that's it, it's perfect. I can go back to bed now, I've done the lot. No, no. No. You, you never get them to that point. Yeah. Um, painting and wallpapering. 
buying new furniture and laying decking or a patio in the garden are also among the outstanding jobs for the average house. Yes, though it's worth outstanding. We've been going to do hours now for two years, all that. Um, it's also made that three quarters of us worry that we'll never get our homes to a point where we're completely happy with them because of lack of time, money and know-how. Hmm. Mm. That could be well true, actually. Yeah. Um, OK, talk to a job the average Brit wants to do on their home. Yeah, yes, right, OK. Off yeah. you go, then. You can study off course. Oh, great, thanks, yes. <laughs> is, is that an implication that you want me to try and find the information about this? Or, yeah. or do you want me to do it at the top of my head? <laughs> Have a go from the top of your head. Go on, then. Uh, right, uh, get rid of mice. Not in list. No. All right, then. Well, I can uh, I can go by what you've been trying to do, which you, you've done the kitchen. Uh, which, yes. Which looks jolly good. Yes. Yes. Um, which isn't quite finished yet, but yes. Mm, um, well, you've got rid of the mice. Have I mentioned mice? Mm. Yes, we've got rid of David, yes, yes. <laughs> um, the front door. Ah, yes. It is handy to have a front door. Yes. We're, we're going to be working on that one. Yes. Yeah, I reckon you should put a black door with number 10 on it. Oddly enough, the paint for the front door is black. Oh, lovely. Yeah, look forward to that one. Yes. Um, right. Uh, well, the, the, top, mm. the top 20 jobs the average Brit wants to do to their home is, one, paint a room or rooms. That is your, your priority, your top job. Right, yeah. Well, you sort Normally of, it starts yeah. off with that because that is the easiest part. You sit there and think, this room needs to create after Christmas. Do you know anyone that's sort of done wallpaper and only done half a room? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mm, right. Mm. It was a good job, though, wasn't it, really? Hmm. Because then there was only half of it to flood. <laughs> yeah, we had we did get a nice flood in the dining room. Fortunately, we do have two wetsuits, so yes. we were OK. And two canoes, which we did find out did flood. That was, that was a real good yeah. job. It was Never a job mind. put away that had to be done, which was test the canoes. Oh, it did, didn't it? Yeah. Well done. Um, yeah, you've got points for that. The second on the list is refit the kitchen. Well, you've done that one, so well done. <coughs> well, I'm, I'm, I'm three quarters of the way through that one, yes. Um, the, the third job on the list is um, re-carpet the whole house. Oh, that needs doing. That definitely needs doing, yes, the office, does, yes. yes. Um, refit the bathroom toilet. That has been done. Mm, well done. Um, buy new furniture, constantly. Landscape or change the gardens? Oh, golden penny. We, we do have 100,000 acres, yeah, so I think it's... Yeah, uh, I just go out this weekend and landscape the garden. I'll come back when I'm finished. I'll see you in about ten years. We have six swimming pools and ten tennis courts, don't we, Tortoise Pickles? So yes. It's quite a lot yes. to do, but we're getting there. Uh, wallpaper rooms. Or oh, half a rooms. Just do mm. half and then you sit there and think, I can't, it makes the job a lot quicker. Well, I always laughed at what your mother said, because we've had some of the wallpaper coming off the walls, haven't we? Mm. Just for fun. Uh, yeah. Um, and your mother used to staple them on the walls, you <laughs> told me. Yeah. Oh, good idea. Never thought of that. <laughs> oh, dear. Either that or used the tack and a hammer. That was his second favourite. Yeah. Did it work? Yeah, because then you hung a picture from it. Oh, that's nice. That's oh. clever. Yeah. Mmm. Build an extension. Not quite around her yet. No. No. Mm. Convert the loft. Don't need to. Done. Um, build a conservatory. Is that anything to do with the conservatives? No. Oh, that right, would be quite nice to do, actually, yes, yes. Build a conservatory on the back, yeah. Mm. Yeah, build a conservative. Sorry, a conservatory. And yes. put David and George in it. That would be if quite good. If you so wish, yes. Oh, thank you. I will, yes. Um, a little decking or patio in the garden. Well, that one, we have the plans all ready for it. We have the... the um, well, everything is sourced. It's just getting around to doing it. Well, you were thinking of taking the um, the decking away from the log cabin in Aberdeenshire, weren't you? Yeah, but I think there might be noises. Mm. Oh, I think there might, but never mind. You could always say it wasn't we us. Need, we need a new few more cardboard boxes to put in his place, so they won't miss it when we mince in the dry. Exactly, I yeah. quite agree with you, yes. Mm. Um, replace internal doors. That's been on the to-do list since we moved in. Yes. Replace external doors and windows. <laughs> 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 no, the wind sorts that out for us. Hmm. Yes, we don't have a window, do we, in the <coughs> dining room? It's just a gaping hole. <laughs> hmm. Well, the room's been done. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well done, Thomas Pickles. Yes. Yes. Um, install energy-efficient windows to blaze it. 
Um, no, 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 I'll stick with it on the window, thank you. <laughs> Extend the kitchen to make it bigger. Yeah. I don't think that's an issue no. in uh, where we are at the moment. No. Replace carpets with laminate flooring. Done. Mm, no, no, no. No, is it? No, it is. It is, oh. in one room, yes, yes. Yeah. Um, add underfloor heating, no thanks. Install en suites. Be a bit difficult. We got a bucket. True. Yep. Um, build a build walk in wardrobe. Mice. Hmm, yes. Install a downstairs toilet bathroom. Already got one. Hmm. Now, the top ten reasons why our houses will never be perfect are we'll never have enough money, it needs professional work, there will always be something we want to do on our home first. It's an ongoing project. We don't have the time. The things that need doing are too big much for us to do. We can't do what we want in our current home, so we would move tomorrow. Um, we don't plan to stay here forever, so it seems pointless trying to get it perfect. We've always got something else which is bigger priority, and we don't have the motivation to do it anymore. Hmm. So there you go. Lazy salts. Yes. yes. Uh, or, failing that... You could call in the I do it myself man. You could, yes. Yes, mm. it is morning to Ralph. Well, let's face mm. it, I mean, you, you say this here, yeah, I do it myself man, but he did build his house from ground upwards. That's what I'm saying, yes. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, apparently it's not the first one he's built either. No, uh, yeah, Ralph is a uh, good morning to Ralph from oh. Cold Backy. He is actually very good at what he does. He's a lot of it yeah. he does do himself. And he's a retirement age. You never believe it, but yeah, he's 65. Ah. People that tell you their age out of the blue, especially when they turn 65 and they're retiring, you think, my God, I thought they were only in their 40s. True. Yes. Oh, well, then. Mm. There is another one to do with home, then. 31% of men have never done this job at home. What could it be? Um, it's got to be some type of um, housework. Yeah, I suppose I've got to No. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Hoovering. No. Uh, um, he, uh, he polishing? Clean the toilet. A what? Clean the toilet. Where is it? Bathroom. What does it look like? Um, how can I explain it? Well, if Scruffy the dog gets its way, it, it'll be black and grey and I'll have a beard round it. Will I have seen it? No. <laughs> no, it's camouflaged. That's good, because I haven't done that. No, that's fine. No, no we can do that one. That, that's not, not a problem. Phew. I began to think it was only I might have done then, and I thought, my brain's gone again. <laughs> no. 20% uh, of us eat this every day. What might it be? Eat it. Hmm. Mice. Mice no. droppings. No, I hope not. Um, you, you eat it when you go and manufacture food, you eat mouse droppings every day. Um, oh, great, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me think then. Something we eat every day, bread. Good eye, it's a clue. Peter? No. Oh, I wonder where he'd gone. You must have ate him. Um, Good eye, why don't you eat this in the morning? It will help your blood levels. Snake? No. Egg? No. Cereals? Oh, cereals, All right, yes, yes, yes. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Uh. Oh, actually, did you know at the moment, two. NASA satellites are chasing each other around Earth, tracking the distance between the two. And they've nicknamed them Tom and Jerry. <laughs> Which one's got the hammer? I don't know, you'll have to check the manual for that oh. one. Yeah. Um, and um, when you meet somebody for the first time, yeah. your brain takes around 90 seconds to decide whether you like them or not. Oh, we'll slow down on that as well, then. It used to be 20. It did used to be 20. Mm. It, now it's changed. Yeah. Yes. Uh, you're very good at this, aren't you? I am. I always, yeah. Yeah. Sleeping in the middle of the day in your armchair. Oh. Uh, after just 45 minutes of sleep, it can boost your memory by five times. Oh, this is the, um, the, the thing you nap into, what they call it, power nap or something. Yes. Like yeah. Mm. They've, they've been on about this for years and years and years and years and years. And nobody's actually come up with any sort of proof that it works. No. Sometimes you can feel worse afterwards, can't you? You can, yeah. Depending on how tired you are. Um, you, you, you tend to find that people who do shift work uh, tend to have the, the, the breaks when they're in, in work. Mm. Or go sit in a corner, dark corner, and just have a ten-minute nap. 
and then they feel absolutely fully invigorated again, which can work. It's like if you're watching telly and you feel yourself doze off, and then you wake up and sort of look at the telly and think, well, I know I've been asleep, I haven't been asleep long because I can remember what this part's about or whatever. But then all of a sudden you feel wide awake. Yes. And oh. apparently, technically, in order to feel wide awake, you have to jump awake. Really? Yeah, you know when you sort of jump in your seat type of thing? No, not jump physically, but just jump in your seat and think, oh, I'm not enough then. Oh, I know that what you mean. That is when the actual nap works because it sends the adrenaline back flowing through your body again. Oh, right. Yeah. Oh. yeah. See, I'm not just a pretty face. No, I, you're not, are you? I no. don't know the odd thing. That's nice. Yeah. All right. Uh, Tortoise Pickles, mm-hmm. do you enjoy chocolates? Love chocolates. Yes. Well, the most love, expensive love, love, love. chocolates have just come out. Oh, I know. I want one. Oh, you've seen it then? Oh, yes, yes, yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah. Are you going to buy them all for Easter? I can do if you like. Oh, good. Yeah. I'll put a picture of me mother on it, shall I? I'll whip in cup and see who's for you. Hmm. It only costs £6,800 each. Yes, yeah. They're covered in edible gold. <laughs> Yeah, they give you wind. They give you wind as well, mm-hmm. so you've had some, yes. It also contains saffron, Madagascan vanilla and white truffle. Yeah. Mm, well, black truffles would not have any problems with because he goes and digs them up the garden. It is good morning to Wizzy the dog, who um, mm. enjoys gardening. Yeah. Um, edible gold. Now, if I remember rightly, uh, a few months ago, the, the, the one about edible gold, and these uh, gold powder stuff you sprinkle on your cakes and things. Mm. And didn't they say that it was harmful to you? Say what, sorry? Didn't they say it was harmful to you? What, gold? Yeah, the edible gold. Because they, the edible gold contains some type of plastic um, pellets or something. Like that. Oh, yeah. Maybe, yeah. I, I don't know. Wrong. I could be wrong. It could have been talking about something totally different, but I thought yeah. I was talking about the edible gold. But well, there we go. Oh. Yes. Oh, well, never mind. Yeah. yeah. Right, it's okay. And it says here that a lot of people that drive their cars, too many of them, are taking selfies when they're behind the wheel. Really? That's yeah. stupid. We had one a f- couple of years ago. There was somebody driving in front of us when we were on the Isle of Skye. Mmm, yes. Um, yeah, I remember that one. Yeah. And we noticed that they had. she had some people in the uh, back seat and she was there driving and we could see through the car, because we were behind her, we could see her getting her phone out and taking mm. photos of herself, didn't we? Yes, I thought, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Oh. Been, been great if you'd had one of them things, if you bought them off eBay, called a siren, and when you saw her do it, you just went out, pressed the button for the window to come down. Yeah. Stick it on the roof of the car. Oh, that would have given her the wellies, wouldn't it? Well, yeah, if you remember the old police sirens, that used to be the Dida ones, not the... Yeah. Right, well, the old Dida ones, well, I drove a car which used to have one of those on it. Oh, that's nice. Great fun. I'm sure. Yeah. Did you did you use it then when you were driving along? Mm, not really, no. no oh. really. I think technically it would have been illegal, I'm not sure. Oh. But um, it was rather interesting because it was on a white Ford Granada. Did you put a police uniform on as well? No, I didn't need to. It was on a white oh, Ford right. Granada and it had blue stripes down the side of it. Mm. And cars in front used to look at the in the mirror, and if they were speeding, the only thing was used to slow down. Oh, lovely! And so you get stuck then behind a car. Oh, not so lovely. Yeah. Mm. But he did the actual owner of the car put a siren on it. <laughs> oh, great laugh! Oh, I'd have loved that. Yeah. Can, can we see if there's one available? I'd love to put that on our Land Rover. You can, yeah, you can actually buy them. That'd yeah, be really uh, right. You can buy two and blues as well. You're Good not Google. Allowed to use it. You're just not allowed to use it. Hmm. Well, but you're not allowed to put it on your car, but you're not allowed to use it. I'll just stick it on the car. Yeah. 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 I want one like the Americans have. And they just wind the window down, grab it out of the glove box and put it on the roof. Yeah. Like Ooh. A, a blue light bulb. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I want one of them. I think I'd create them. Just imagine being sat there in a traffic queue and thinking, I'm fed up with this. Just open your window up put the blue light on top of the car and just turn it on and watch all the cars part like the Red Sea did for somebody and then off you go down the middle yeah that, that, that'd be great wouldn't it that would that would solve the problem on the motorways up and down the UK it would yes if, uh, I would recommend that if you if you have the same problem that we do especially on the M6 <laughs> and you can be stopped there for hours and hours why don't you get one of these things that we're thinking on doing and stick it on the top of your car? Yeah, but, this, but the problem is, mm, if idea. it was legal, everybody would do it, wouldn't they? So you'd be back to square one again. 
Yeah, but you would think, hang on a minute, I'd better still do the right thing in case that one behind me is a real siren. How would you know if it was real or not? Well, that's true. Yes. I say, especially yeah. you ought to do it with a police fancy dress costume on as well, just mm. for the authenticity. And then, and then people probably would think, oh dear. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so let's play safe here. Mm. Yeah. And then as you overtake them, look look at them and, and wave as you go <laughs> by. Yeah, <laughs> yeah lovely. Oh. Right, um, Try explaining to the copper that you're not really um, impersonating a police officer. No. No, obviously, it's a fancy dress uniform. Yes, sir, but you're driving a white car with blue lights on top, sirens. Are you really going to say that's fancy dress as well? Well, just say you've got a bit part in a film. Well, that's true, you got lost. Mmm, yeah, you want... They told you to drive down the sea road, turn around and come back with all sirens blazing. Exactly, yeah. yes, why not? Yes. Well, we were going to do something similar, weren't we, a few years ago when we were uh, in Bournemouth mm. on the A338, if you can remember those traffic road works. We thought, how can we keep people entertained when we're all sta- yeah. sat here like a car park? And we thought of something, didn't we? We, we did, We yes, didn't have yes. it with us at the time, but we were going to get it for the yes. following year. Wind is down, I find <laughs> full on, and the autumn statements. Yes, uh, play George with the autumn statement on full volume. Actually, it's been quite good, that, because everybody, after that the first day, when people thought, oh, I've been there, yeah, that, yeah, that's clever, that, I never thought of that, yeah, I'll listen to that. Yeah. Second day, I think, oh, it's the same one. And by the time the third day comes, they're all getting there a little bit peed off with it. But the fourth day, the road would be empty. It would, but it doesn't have to be the same autumn statement. I mean, George did one from 2010 to... <laughs> Um, I think he did 2016 before the how referendum long, as well. How long was it? No, he didn't. Oh. No, 20, by, by autumn 2016, they're gone. Yeah. So you're looking at autumn statements from 2010 to 2015. Yeah. So you have five of them by George. And mm. I do actually have all five. I know. Tell me about it. I recorded uh. them last year or the year before now, whenever it do da was. Oh, dear. Mm. Mm. And the, they actually, for a while, went on the auto playout system <laughs> as well did, on, yeah. on Croft UK Radio. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think they're on there at the moment. Oh, dear. Oh, no, I can soon put that right. Oh, no, 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 It's no, not no. a problem. No, it is not a worried thing. Yeah, don't, don't worry about it at all, mm. at all. Yeah, right. Ah, right, OK, then it's coming up for uh, 10 o'clock. Uh, the, the, the station manager. <laughs> yeah, that one, otherwise known as Cock of the North. Uh-huh. White Poodle. Rascal the dog, he, he's gonna. But person, bear in mind, he's the boss. He's got the script now for the morning show, wasn't he? Uh, yes. yes. Morning, Rascal the dog. Good morning to me. I'll be here after the next song with Westcliff Fatlets. Yeah, and then we've got Scruffy the dog, black and grey with a beard. He's the reporter of the show and the show chef. He'll be here doing another meal. Oh, uh, yes. It's gonna be called Scruffles. Truffles. Mm. Nice. So before that, would you like to go back to desk three then? Tortoise Pickles! Can, can I just say, you, yeah. you, you say that he has a script for the radio show. I know he does, yeah. He right. also writes the script. I know he does. For yeah. um, a, a certain oh. ghost programme on TV. Oh. You're not talking about Yvette Fielding, are you? No, so no, the other one. Listening to this very radio show. Good morning. Yes, no, the other one. Oh, that's amazing. Yes, All yes, right, okay. that one. Yeah. Yeah, because if you notice how many times the number three comes oh, into us. Yes, it has been noted. Yes, mm. yes, yes. Mm. All right, here well, then, let's have um, a little bit of let's get the party started. Please welcome, live on the Croft UK Radio and North Highlands and Islands Radio Morning Show, the station manager and the boss, Rascal the Dog, otherwise known as Cock of the North, Scruffy the Dog, who's the chef and the show reporter, and Izzy the Dog, the show producer and scientist. Uh, it's us, we're here. Oh, good morning to Scruffy the dog who's here. Uh, yes, uh, good morning to me. Uh, Scruffy the dog, uh, black and grey with a beard. Uh, I do ballroom dogs. <laughs> you certainly do. And uh, I don't know Rascal the dog's here as well. Yeah, I'm here as well. I'll be rest up backwards. I know I'm here as well. I'm Izzy the dog. All right, they're all here then, Todd's Pickles. They certainly are, yes. Right, it's okay then. It's um, over to your rascal at Fatlets, then off you go. Yeah, right, here we go then. Uh, start with the first one. Yeah. Why did the lady sing lullabies to her purse? Ooh. 
Uh, I don't know. Why did ladies sing lullabies to their purse? It's because she wanted a sleeping bag. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, here's another word of rascal the dog. Uh, uh, what musical instrument is found in the bathroom? I don't know, Scruffy the dog. What musical instrument is found in the bathroom? Uh, uh, a tube of toothpaste. <laughs> <laughs> I've got one and I'm Izzy the dog. Uh, what do you have there, Izzy the dog? I tried to escape the Apple store. I couldn't because there were no windows. <laughs> Izzy the dog. Uh, oh, did you know that I'm very pleased with my new fridge magnet? Yes. Uh, uh, so far, I've got 12 fridges. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here's another one then. Uh, Grandma's been staring through the window ever since it started to snow. Uh, if it gets any worse, I'll have to let her in. <laughs> the dog. Uh, which day do chickens hate the most? I don't know, Scruffy the dog. Which day do chickens hate the most? Uh, uh, Friday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, I've gone over to the uh, Christmas countdown clock. Are you on the Christmas countdown clock? <laughs> uh, yes, sir. Uh, uh, where are you, Scruffy the dog? I'm on the Christmas countdown clock. Right, school the dog. Uh, uh, it's uh, Christmas time. Uh, it is December the 25th. Yes. Uh, uh, 280 days, 13 hours, uh, 50 minutes, and 54 seconds to Christmas day. Yes. I've got one. Is he the dog? Oh, is he the dog's got one? I've got one for Easter. <coughs> is he the dog's got one for Easter? Sunday, 1st of April. 12 days, 13 hours, 50 minutes and 37 seconds till Easter day. Oh, I think you're fine, Dr. Pickles. It's a, a week Sunday. Um, I think you probably will, yeah. Yeah, don't forget the clocks go forward next weekend. Yes. Yes. I've got one as well. Oh, what do you have there? What? Oh, the dog. I've got the countdown to Brexit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, March 29th, 2019. Uh, 375 days, 12 hours, 50 minutes and 3 seconds till Brexit. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just give a public information notice? Hmm. Uh, if you have a passport that needs redoing, oh. or you want to apply for one, try and get it done before March the 27th, which yes. is a week tomorrow. Yes. Because it goes up in price. I think it goes from £75 to £87 a week Tuesday, doesn't it, Thomas Pickles? So I just thought I'd let you know that. Save a bit of money. <laughs> Right, uh, they've now left the studio. They're going down the corridor right now into the kitchen. I can see them on the computer screen here. Oh yeah, they're on their way. Oh <laughs> I know, yeah. Yeah, they'll have to cook another meal. Scruffy, Rascal and Izzy the dog. Um, right, are you there yet? Uh, no, not quite. We're just going down the corridor now, but we won't be long, will we? Rascal the dog. Uh, uh, yes, we just arrived. We've just come in the kitchen. And we're here, yes. Uh, uh, what's we cooking today then? Oh, I the dog. Uh, today, Scruffy the dog, we're cooking fish with white wine, chilli and tapenade. Um, over to Izzy the dog for the ingredients. Oh, you need one tablespoonful of olive oil, four white fish fillets. Uh, four tablespoonfuls of tapenade. Uh, what else there? Oh, I the dog. Uh, Scruffy the dog, you need one small red finger chilli uh, Chopped into tucks Four tablespoons of freshly grated Parmesan cheese mm. Four tablespoons of dry white wine Hang on a minute, Thomas Pickles is trying to say something, what was that? Parmesan cheese Yeah Did you know mm. in the Ooh. fire of London mm. oh, yes. The man who wrote mm. the diaries Your diaries? No, the man who wrote his diaries mm. um, oh, Buried all his parmesan cheese. No. Yeah. Oh, and he was yes, because it was so um expensive. Ooh. 
Uh, it was had a better price than gold. And so what era was this? Sorry, remind me. That was at the London Fire. Uh, Scruffy the dog, you've got some news, haven't you? Uh, oddly enough, the London Fire... Not the Fire of London, that's uh, uh, Yes, I, I knew about that, so I went to London with a shovel. Uh, one day when I was visiting 10 Downing Street... <laughs> 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 And I've got the parmesan cheese. Yes. Yeah, right, here we go. Uh, go to the Rayburn and cook it up to 220 centigrade. Uh, thank you, Rascal the Dog. Uh, brush a white oven proof dish with oil. Yes. What's next, Rascal the Dog? Uh, Scruffy the Dog, then you season the fish with salt and pepper to taste. Uh, place in the prepared dish in a single layer. Uh, what's next, Izzy the Dog? Mix together the tapenade and chilli and spread over the fish, then sprinkle with the cheese. And uh, what's after that then, Scruffy the dog? Uh, thank you, Izzy the dog. Uh, pour the wine round the fish uh, uh, and bake in a preheated oven for about 15 minutes. Uh, and what's next? Well, I'll score the dog. Yeah, book it until the flesh flakes easily and then serve it with rice. Then you have your fish with white wine, chilli and tapenade. Oh, lovely, <laughs> thank you. I've got to clean up after all oh, them. Oh, no, yeah. Have you seen the sink after they've done their meals? I certainly have, yes, yes. I know, it's almost stacked to the ceiling with stuff. I oh, know, so I've got to be doing that a little bit later on again, no doubt. Right, OK, then, thank you very much to Rascal, Scruffy and Izzy the dog. Uh, yes, I'm off now. Oh. You're off? You're off. Yes. Going? Yes. Right, what are you up to? Uh, busy day, busy day. Uh, I've got to get a broomstick ready. <laughs> I'm mistaken yeah. going out in some way. <laughs> <laughs> I think you read his mind. <laughs> yes. Yes, but we are back. I'll be back tomorrow, Rascal the Dog. Um, I'll have to check the diary. I'll be back tomorrow to be dad. Mm-hmm, we are. Oh, yes. we're back tomorrow. Uh, so for now, it's goodbye, everybody. Oh, goodbye. <laughs> You can contact the Croft UK Radio and North Highlands and Islands Radio Morning Show with Rebecca Pickles, the Blow Up Character Twelveless Pickles, Rascal the Dog, Scruffy the Dog, and Izzy the Dog by email ms at croftukradio.co.uk. You can message us on our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash Croft UK Radio, or you can follow us on Twitter or contact us through Skype at Croft UK Radio. This is Croft UK Radio and North Highlands and Islands Radio, your distant local radio station, nhir.co.uk and croftukradio.co.uk. Yeah, a few good mornings going out. Uh, Aaron Wheeler, morning to you. It's also hello to Arthur Sutherland, who's out in a boot today. What's uh, the other half of him doing? He's what? What's the other half of him doing? Oh, I don't know. You, you'd have to check. Yeah, You've got a friend called Arthur, haven't you? I have, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I didn't realise. I mean, you, you confused Diane in the shop. Good morning to Diane and Gordon in tongue. Mm-hmm. She wondered who Arthur was on your hand. I know, yes. Until you told her, no, it's arthritis. Mm. <laughs> right, yes. Good morning to Ron and Ian in Washington and also Wynne. The good news is Wynne is feeling a bit better. Got so me. that's good. Yeah, pleased about that. Yep. Um, also, hello to Ralph Mule listening in. Kelvin Lynch is around this morning as well. <coughs> uh, hello to uh, Graham Shaw. Good morning to you. Uh, Geraldine Pointing is out in a boot yeah, with the interactive band. Unfortunately, Colin, who's in the band, isn't very well at the moment. So we'll pass all our best wishes on to Colin because uh, they live in Mercia in they Spain. Do, yes. yes. I don't know how they'll get on with Brexit. <sighs> <coughs> yeah. I'm sure they won't be worried about it. Mm. Uh, hello also to Anna and Gordon, who's in Thurso. Uh, Gordon's up for retirement in a couple of weeks' he time. Is, and yeah. moving to York. Uh, Lisa and Francois in Bournemouth. Did you know, just mm. here, yeah, it's fine. Do you know York has um, been awarded the best place in England to live? Has it? Yeah. 
Oh, all Don't right. Why? Well, there you go. Is it connected to your brother? <laughs> Don't you know. They've also got the second biggest road rage city as well. Oh, we? Yes, yeah. Mm, for uh, Leeds is first. Yeah. Uh, hello, also to Ridian Morgan. Um, they've got Mary and Paul listening in this morning as well. And, um, oh, yes, Andrew Tucker, morning to you as well. Yes. Oh, that's nice. Uh, David and George. David and George. Who sat in bed listening to us together. Could so that's worse. nice. It could have been George and Mildred. Yeah. Um, anything else on uh, your side? What are Yeah, William Johnson. Um, he's in Philadelphia at the moment. And um, he says, good morning to you all. He said, yes, we can be cute loud and clear over here as well. Um, Abrina Conta. Um, she's in Devon. And um, she says, good morning to you all. Hope all is okay. Weather down here a bit whiter than you. <laughs> yeah, true. Rub it in. Yeah. yeah. Mary Florence says, good morning, dears. How are you all? Um, Tim Blackburn, no relation, I don't think, to Tony. Um, it says, good morning. Great show, as per usual. Uh, but it's similar. Oh, don't you know? Then I says, um, we've got a little bit of snow here again. But don't worry, because we're still moving. Moving? Yes. Where are they going? Don't know. Oh, what, moving house? I don't know. Maybe it just means moving around town. Well, it could be, yeah. Well, yeah. if you're still listening, give us a quick message. Tell us where you're moving to, what are you doing? I'm nosy. And it's because, um, yeah, yeah, she's nosy. Mm. Mm. Rini Green, um... She says, hi. She says, I'm actually not writing from your own page. It's my friend's page that I'm writing for, uh, from. She says, um, good morning to you both. Uh, listened in this morning for the first time. I love it. We'll be listening again tomorrow. Won't be listening in again. Will be. Oh, will be. <laughs> nah, that's it from this side, I think. Yes. That's no, yeah. If you do have There's any, a few more, but I've just lost them. If you do have any um, <laughs> complaints or criticisms, the BBC one. You, <laughs> you can email to Abdus Pickles. Yes. <laughs> well, normally people do, so there you go. Yeah, I love them. <laughs> <laughs> Newspapers, right? Starting off with the Guardian. It's going on about the. the Pardon? The Gideon. Yeah. Alleged information breach involving 50 million Facebook profiles. Mm. It says a data firm have come under pressure in America and the UK to explain the incident. Uh. All right. I don't know. So if you've got a Facebook account, it might have been hacked into. Yeah. Uh, the Times... What, you, what eh? they actually did was, you see, hmm. if, if this hack actually went into your Facebook account and you had a look at what you do, what you don't do, where you go, what you don't... Uh, yeah. do, where you live. Yeah. And then it matches you to um, a parliamentarian type of thing for your area. Judge! And so, therefore, if one person is doing, let's say, building a care home and another one is building a hospital and you put down on your list that you think you're doing more care homes, they will automatically put you to the man with the care home or woman with the care home. Oh. So that he should get your vote and the Camorrist count votes up about this. Oh. So that, that's how this thing worked. Yeah. Oh, very good. Yeah. Shelby's not an MP anymore, is it? I could just accidentally leave a message on my fart book at the time from Tatton. <laughs> True. Yeah. Wondering more about the economy. Yes, the only problem was, of course, you wouldn't be able to use your vote, would you? So. Yeah. Mm. Uh, the Times calls for MPs to be given more powers to investigate technology companies. Again, talking about the Facebook mm-hmm. data leak claims. It says also that the gambling watchdog is moving away from backing tough curbs on fixed odds <laughs> betting terminals. Uh, the Sun is going on about the arrest of Ant McPartlin. I think the majority of them are the arrest of Ant. Yes. Right, so he's had a bit of a thing going on. Daily, Mer- Daily Mirror is also talking about Ant as well. Right. Um, the Eye, Putin, is uh, there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, the eye would be for Putin and, and uh, mm. Harry Putin knew, of course, because the eye is Russian owned. Is it? Yeah. No, is it part of the independent? Yes, which oh. is also Russian owned. Yeah. Right, yeah, of course, he won the Russian presidential election. Mm-hmm. Reckons he used a press conference to brand as nonsense the UK's belief that Moscow was behind the poisoning in Salisbury. Yeah, this is the second sort of comment in the last two days now, which has come out from uh, Russia regarding this. Yesterday they had, um, oh, I forgot his name now, but he's a, a, a big Russian person on, um, especially the, the Russian shows. And is he, he's got funny white hair, hasn't he? That's him, yeah. I know who 
him. Uh, he yeah. came out and said that it was actually it was English who may have done it. Yeah. Uh, actually, it was on the Andrew Marr show yesterday morning, and the question was put to him uh, regarding the, the poison and stuff. And he came out with an answer which said, well, hang on a minute, you are more or less saying Russia's done it with no proof. Mm, all right. But Port Down also has facilities and it's got the chemicals. So why not from there? It's only eight miles away. Oh, no, he didn't say why not from there. He just said, and that is only eight miles away. Yeah. And from that, it's jumped on the bandwagon, especially the... <laughs> it's a biased broadcasting company who have turned around and said, well, whoa, he said that we've done it ourselves. And he didn't say anything of the sort. No. But Ma kept pushing him and pushing him and pushing him about these things. And yet when he got to Dr. Boris, he sat there and says, I know we're not allowed to say much about this because it's an ongoing thing. And he sit there and says, now how two-faced can one person actually get? I think that's when you walked out of the room. It was actually, yes. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> Metro. Mm-hmm. It's also going on about the Salisbury thing, how Boris Johnson hit back at Russian claims that the nerve agent used in the attack could have come from laboratory in the UK. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. The Times, food on sale in shops is widely tainted with a dangerous airborne... Mouse, mouse droppings. Have you got a thing about... Oh, oh, oh. All I can think about with mouse droppings is to check the bedroom drawers again. Mm-hmm. And the cupboards. Mm-hmm. Oh, the landing still needs doing, by the way. Oh, There's cool. a few mouse droppings in, in yeah. the cupboard oh, on the well. landing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, just a minute. I think I'm on page 75 of the Sedulli Sturgeons. <laughs> oh, let me think. What else might mm-hmm. there be? Oh. Well, it's another 75 pages. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, the Times is actually going on about um, airborne plastic particles. Yes. Mm. They'd done an investigation, found the issue affected stuff on sale in uh, open counters such as fish. Mm. That's the newspaper, some of them that's happening then this morning. Nice, isn't it? Right, it's half past ten, so would you like to go back oh. to your desk three? What is pickles? It's in the can, yes. Okie dokie then, let's have a little bit of, um, of the old Madonna and like a virgin. Croft UK Radio. You're listening to the Croft UK Radio and North Highlands and Islands Radio Morning Show with Rebecca Pickles and the blow-up character 12 Death Pickles. Also the station manager, Rascal the Dog, the political reporter, Scruffy the Dog, and the show producer, Izzy the Dog. NHIR.co.uk and CroftUKRadio.co.uk. So, uh, hope you enjoyed the musical intermission there. Uh, we we just went back to bed for ten minutes, oh, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool, how did you take us out? Good news. Um, right now, if you're in the north of Scotland, like mm. where we are, if you happen to go outside last night in the middle of the night, you may have seen the Northern Lights. Yeah. Good for you, because we didn't. No. No, we didn't know they were on. We went we? to bed. <laughs> I know. We haven't seen them properly yet, have we? No. Yeah, right here, up in the north of Scotland, they were quite strong last night. Isle of Skye got them. Oh. All the way through to Lewis. Um, you could have also seen them in Oban, which is in Argyll. Wester Ross also had them as well. Um, the best areas that were there to uh, see them Northern Nights last night was Caithness, Sutherland, which is us, mm-hmm. Shetland and Aberdeenshire. So you <laughs> extremely lucky if you just happen to go out last night and see them. It's just like we were just saying, because we've not really spotted them properly, have we? Because no. every time that they're on, we're in bed. True. A lot of it is your luck, isn't it? If you oh, it's, it's, to, uh, it's one of them things. You've got to be there and you've got to be at the minute sort of thing. Um, it, it, it's, it, you can't set your clock by me. It's not something that they can sit there and be like an asteroid or a, uh, whatever coming down and saying, right, if you set your telescope to so-and-so at 10.35pm at night time, if it's clear, you will definitely see it. it. It's not like that at all. It has no. to be the right sort of... Um, ingredients type of thing, be like baking a cake. The sky has to have the right ingredients in it, the atmosphere has to have the right ingredients in it. And then it may flash once or it may flash continually for hours. You, 
he just one of those things. Yeah, the, the no- annoying thing is when we do go out in the middle of the night, we never see them. They're not there. No. We, we pick the wrong night. Never mind. Claro. Never mind. Things could be worse, couldn't they? Try to pick up. Oh, they could, yeah. Things could be a lot worse. They could be, you could yeah. get a knock on the door in the middle of the night. Mm. You could open the door and they're stood there with a birthday cake. It's yes! Mm. Mm, today, it is uh, being the 19th of March, it's Snowman Burning Day. Snowman Burning Day? What? That's very long, isn't it? No, it's celebrating the changing of the seasons, even though some parts of the UK at the moment are still in winter. Yeah. International Day of Happiness. Oh. Yeah, it's Happy Day today. Right. Uh, World Storytelling Day. That's come all the way from Sweden. Oh, bless. Ravioli Day. Really? Mm. Now, that's interesting, because I was trying to think what we could have for tea if we didn't go away. Go away? For shopping. Oh, right. Oh, that's all right then. I thought, please don't tell me you've secretly booked my mother's trip to Bournemouth be on me back. Oh, no, funny about that. Did I mention that? Oh, no, please, no, no. no. Uh, At least give me some warning. Uh, So I can think of an excuse why I don't want to go, which would be quite handy, really, wouldn't it? Yes. Uh, Right, uh, anything there on desk 10? What are those? Did you know there is... um, a handbook available and it's called a defect levels handbook defect levels handbook yeah the defect levels handbook know it well do i've read it hundreds of times i've made notes what is it about (laughs) it's the food defect action levels it's levels of natural and unavoidable defects in foods that present no health hazards for humans Now, the actual book itself contains introduction, products without defects, use of chemical substances to eliminate defect levels, using the food defect action level level booklet, and a glossary. Right, but in this book it tells you such things as um, what chemicals you can use in food. Um, Arsenic. Oh, well, funny enough. Polonium. Ah, Polonium, probably not, no, but arsenic is in quite a lot of foods. Our sticks in quite a lot of foods, is yeah. it? Oh, all right. Apple pies contain uh, a 0.00 percentage sort of thing. Yeah. You know, the number at the end. Oh. But it does contain arsenic because so many people get through and get Christian to the mangled thing. Oh, nice. Hmm. Um. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. Now, now let, let's have a look at what um, some things can do. Tomato juice, for instance. Tomato juice may taste better at 30,000 feet in the air, but you may actually think about whether you get it out of a can or a bottle. You'd, le- you'd need a long step of ladders, wouldn't you? Yeah, you would. Funny enough, if you're in an aircraft, tomato juice actually tastes really, really nice. Hmm. On the ground, unless you're actually into that type of thing, tomato juice tastes horrible. Oh, well, how come? I don't get that. Why would it, it taste differently? The atmosphere alters the, the structure of the, um, oh. the actual fruit. Oh, OK. No, I don't know that. No. Oh, Do you not, you're not a fan of tomato juice, then? Yeah, not really, not, not unless it's um, really, really heavily diluted with um, vodka, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Um, now, you may think twice before, actually, as I say, getting the can out and having a tin of tomato juice. Now, this also goes for tomato soup. <laughs> Tomato soup? Yeah. Yeah. Now, because the FDA, which is a food um, defects agency, allows up to 10 drosophilia. What does that mean? Drosophilia? Yes, yes, yes. It's actually meat. Well, if you break it down slightly. Please. Yeah. Yes. Okay. It's um, one or more maggots per 100 grams. One and one maggots. So in a can of soup, you've got maggots. Yes, is what they're saying. Yes. Technically, you have right. the Drosophilia, <coughs> which is a fruit fly egg. Real ones, or have they popped off? Mm-hmm. If, if it's in a can, they're probably real still. Well, right, live. You know what I mean? Yes. Mm. Yes. Oh, lovely. Oh. Um. <laughs> oh dear. Spruits. Uh, 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 that's my doorbell. Oh, good morning mm-hmm. to Scruffy the dog. Uh, Cook mm. sprouts. Yes, what about sprouts? Well, uh, the agency allows oh. for an average of up to 30 oh. aphids. 30 what? Aphids. Aphids? Yeah. What's that? Which are commonly known as plant lice. Oh. 
Mm. And also Wonderful. little tiny winged insects and things like that. Oh, lovely. And you're allowed 30 of these aphids per 100 grams. Will this all alter after no. Brexit? Mm, probably not. No, it'll just get worse. Um, for every 50 grams of cinnamon and 25 grams of ground paprika, the FDA allows up to 10 rodent hairs. In cinnamon, it's up to 400 insect fragments are allowed per 50 gram sample. Mm-hmm. Mold is quite common. Uh, low levels of mold are allowed in most fruits and vegetables, canned and fresh, as well as butters and jams. In cranberry sauce, the average mold can be up to 14% per sample. 14% of mold. Well, I'm, I'm assuming cheese gets it as well, because cheese is made of mold, really, cheese technically, is made of mold, isn't it? Yes, yes. Mm. Uh, blackcurrant jam, but uh, blackcurrant jam, sorry, mold count can be up to 74% per sample. Ah, oh. hmm. Well, that's put me off. Uh. It'd be worse after Brexit. Mm. <laughs> Probably, yeah. Um, cigarette butts and sticks. Mm-hmm. Oh, dear. I think I've got that. Mm. Well, dear, you've got Rascal the Dog in your ears again, haven't you? Yes. Um, and I went, yes. No, he would go out. Oh, that's all right, then, mm. isn't it? Yeah, the, the FDA Ooh. explicitly details on how will percentage of cigarette butts in food. Ooh. One would hope that it could be sort of avoidable, but it doesn't allow for the inclusion of foreign matter. Are they saying then that when they're in the factories and they're making them, somebody has stood there with a fag hanging out their mouth whilst they're making the food? It's not necessarily in the factories, no, it's beforehand. Oh. Um, now, according to the definition, can be objectionable matters such as sticks, stones, burlap bagging, cigarette butts, etc., etc. It also includes the valueless part of the raw plant material, such as the stems. Spices like pepper and mace are also allowed to have trace elements of these things. Mm, yes. It's because in the fields, people just throw them in the field, it goes into the harvest and stuff like that, and then it gets ground down and what have you, so it, it all becomes one thing. Oh. Right, now then, you, 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 you like stuffing, don't you? Yes, we do like stuffing, yeah, especially with horseradish. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, yeah, it goes yes, very yes, well. Yes, it's yes. nice. Yes, well, well, of course, stuffing is made from sage and, and thyme and stuff like that, and bread and oatmeal and, and stuff, yes? Yes. Well, you're allowed nine milligrams per pound of mouse droppings. Oh, God. Do they think we're making them in the house or something? <laughs> no, this is just your, your, your allowable quantities of different stuff that gets into your food stream. I guess somebody then has to sit there and count them before they're allowed on the shops. Um, well, technically, yes, in one respect, and yet probably no in another. Oh, awful. Mm-hmm. So there you go. Mm. I mean, if you actually read the paper, if you want to sit there and read the paper, it's quite a long paper. Uh, but it's quite interesting, actually. Such so things as mildew. Um, it refers to downy mildew, which is fungus infection that causes yellow brown spots on leaves and edible greens. And it's um, quantifiably obvious in mustard. Mm. Oh, oh, oh. Mm. Nice. Yeah. Oh. Uh, right. Okay, then. Right. Let's just see what else is um, in Scotland. Then the Scotland's health and social care services face huge risks if the e if the UK leaves what? Um, Brexit. Yeah. Well, she actually says the, sh- the single market, but yeah, Shona Robinson will put the case for staying in the EU when she goes before Holyrood's Health Committee next week. She worries about the risk to research, access to medicine and retaining staff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so the UK's government said that Brexit, that after Brexit, a new system that works for the whole of the UK would be put into place. Mm-hmm. Oh, God, that would be bloody impossible, wouldn't it, really? Yeah. So the MSPs are sitting on the Parliament's Health Committee investigating what the possible impact could be on health in Scotland after the UK leaves the EU. Well, I didn't. I wouldn't have thought, to be quite honest with you, that NHS Scotland could get much worse. Mm, that's true. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Although they do, to be fair, they do enjoy sending you letters out. Oh, don't they do. They? Very good at writing letters. Yeah. Yes. So well done. Yes. Oh, yeah. They enjoy writing letters, don't they? Mm, that's what I say. They're very good at writing letters. <laughs> 
Yes. Uh, I was going to say, should we announce this on air? But we better not, no. <laughs> Co-leader of the Scottish Greens has told his party conference, which is Patrick Harvey, that if the UK does leave the EU, um, that they are going to campaign to get straight back in again. Oh, God. <laughs> So even after Brexit is, well, won't never be done and finished. Now it'll go on for centuries, mm. but we're still not going to hear the end of it. Yeah, he says um, Scotland's future was European. So about 150 members attended the one-day gathering at the Beacon Arts Centre in Greenock. Yeah, so, God, they can do it. Carry on. It says that if this thing is done to us, if we are taken out of the EU, let's commit to campaigning to get back in because our future is European and we will be part of that project as well as part of that strong green European family. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so as soon as we're out, the following day, they're going to campaign to go straight back in again. Oh, my God. The thing is, though, if we decide, all right, then let's go back in, Aww. the terms of the membership will be totally different to what we've had. Because for a start, I, no doubt I would imagine they would say, OK, you can come back, but you must join the Euro. Well, it will be, yeah, You must join the Schengen the, Zone. Yes, and yeah. You don't get your rebate like you did last time. Nope. I can see it being completely different, can't you? Mm-hmm. Yes, I know. But he's going to go for it anyway. He wants to have a go at trying to get back in again as soon as it's as soon as soon we're oot. So that'll be right laugh, won't it? True. Nice, yes. Right. Oh, a boy, B-U-O-Y. Uh-huh. Yeah. It was found. Um, in Sutherland last month. But it came down from Greenland. Right, OK. Mm, it travelled over a thousand miles to get to near Thurso. It was actually found with a Greenland sea and an- an- me. I don't know. That was attached to it. We do have a Greenland in Cave Ness. When we you do, go near yes. Dunnet Bay, there yes. is a Greenland there, there as well. There is, yeah. Yes. All oh, right, then, let's see what else is it. Oh, dear. Petrol. Diesel. Yes, apparently it's going to shoot up for Easter. It certainly is. Mm. It's expected to go to a four year high because supermarkets have become less competitive. Even though, this is what the AA says the wholesale fuel is lower than this time last year. Yeah, it's going to get higher because of the competition and lack of it. Right. Uh, it's going to be 119.73p. Does, is that understandable? Because I can't do yes. maths. Yep. That's a litre for unleaded. Um, on average with diesel, it's going to so be... technically it's 120. Oh, I see what they're doing now. Right, so 122.58p for diesel. That would be, what, 122? Can you hear me? Yeah. Which we don't have any more, so it'll, no. they'll put you to the nearest penny upwards, probably. Hmm, yes, oh, oh, I'm sure they will, yes. There is also a north-south divide as well. Yes, apparently. Um, is it down south, it's 119 or something or other, and up north, it's 122? Well, according to this anyway, they've given drivers in Bolton are paying 109.7p a litre. Oh, right, oh, yeah, yeah. Whilst down south in places like Hampshire, it's 122.9p. Mm. And no doubt, if you're in the north of Scotland, we'll be at the highest area possible because they don't or like... one of, yes, it's oh, uh, not exactly the highest, but oh, not because the yeah. island's uh, higher. That's um, the, Where we are at the moment in the island itself, we get a, a plus three pence normally. On top of the litre. Lovely. Um, but the, the the governments at one point did bring a thing in saying that we could actually have cheaper fuel in order to allow the petrol station to survive in uh, Scotland. It never seemed to roll out, didn't that, for some reason. That was a, a, a thing that was brought in by London and uh, the Scottish government seemed to um, forget about it. Oh, but he kept the boot. Yeah, no, no, it wasn't under that. Uh, like, it was under um, the next one. Oh, that was Nicola Sturgeon, yes. was it? Yeah. Oh, right. Ah, okay. Right. Mm. Now, we covered this a little bit earlier about what you want to have done to your house. Will you ever get it all done? Mm-hmm. The answer is probably not. Top ten worst decor errors. Oh, dear. Yes, here we go. Right. Mm. Mm. Right. I've never had the first one. No, I've never had a furry toilet seat cover. No. Never? No. I don't even think I've ever had a seat cover. Oh, we have. We had oh, one in... Um, oh, did we? Yeah, oh. we, we, we actually had one in Poor Tree, but it was built really? into it. Oh. And it was fishes, and then we changed it for a oh. warm. Oh, yeah, well done. Yes, I'd forgotten about mm-hmm. that. Yeah. All right. Now, taxidermy. I've never, ever had anything to do with taxidermy. No. 
No, the only thing that I have actually been thinking about doing, oh, dear. and there is a strong possibility what I might do. I'm going to cost a fortune, you know that, don't you? Well, let's face it. If me mother does go before me, it's highly unlikely the way things are going. Mm -hmm. um, but I thought, right, well, she can't make her mind up whether she wants to come up to Scotland or not. One minute she's coming, then she's not. Then she says, right, we've got everything booked for the care home. Mm -hmm. Everything was sorted, mm -hmm. room booked. That's it. All it was left to do was the transport. And then she was coming up the Saturday. Mm -hmm. Got a phone call the day before. Oh, no. Oh, no, I've changed my mind. Oh, no, I'm not doing that anymore. Oh, no. So I'm going to think, right, OK, then. I'm going to nail this on the head once and for all. That when she pops off, I am going to try her up here, stick her in the armchair in the front room, and uh, well, let's just say she'll be a bit of a taxidermist. Mm -hmm. mm. Right, um, oh, popcorn ceilings, what, mm. what on earth is that? Well, I had to you know, sort of think about this one a couple of times because I, I imagine sort of putting gluey paint onto your ceiling mm. and then laid on the floor, mm. flicking popcorn at it. Well, that'd be fun. And then I thought, mm. no, actually, I think I know what this is now. It's, you know, like um, these here bubble paints that you can get with. It's put on with a roller, which has got oh, holes in. Uh, and you go... Uh, and, and it, it sort of peels it off into little balls. Mm. I, I think that's what popcorn is. Oh, I think. But as I'm not an interior decorator, I've no mm, idea. Yeah. Um, Artex. It would be silly in our room anyway, wouldn't it? Just having half a pot of ceiling. It would rather. Yeah. yeah. Mm, Artex plastering. I used to do this a lot, I must admit. Um, many of, of the houses that I've lived in over the years, uh, I've done Artex. I had to quite like Artex. I think it looks Do you want just to explain what that is? Well, it, it, technically, it's a very sloppy plaster. And um, you, you put it on, and then you you make, like, shapes in now, the scowls like a shell, a scallop, you know, and, and things like that. It, it, it really looks nice. Mmm! Yeah, good. Um, velvet sofas. Yeah. No, I've never had one of them. No, my dad did. My, my dad was into the velvet crushed sofas and stuff. Oh, mm. nice. Yeah. Uh, beaded curtains. I can't remember ever having one. No, likewise. There's been in a lot of houses that have got them, mm. and they've never really appealed. But, no. Um, yeah. Oh, animal prints. I don't know what that means. Ah, that, just, that was Is he the dog? Animal prints. Yeah, it, it, it's prints of animals, a bit like um, oh. from South Africa, elephants. Oh, I see, like right, this. yeah. And, uh, or it could also mean animal print cloth. All that daft sort of nonsense, really. Yeah, you yeah. know, like the, your zebra uh, looking chair or something, or whatever. So it's not like putting it in the dog's paw in paint. Well, yeah, I presume so, yeah. If you, you, you like know, that sort that of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, pe pebble dashing. This went out many, many years ago, I must admit, and uh, I never have been in love with pebble dashing. Mm. And to me, it spoils the appearance of any property, but, um, yeah, well, there we go. Acrylic furniture is another one. Mm. And deep shag pile carpet. Now, I like a deep shag pile carpet. <laughs> Deep shag. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. I, I do like them. I think they're nice and lovely to walk on. The only thing is, if you spill anything on, they are an absolute nightmare. Mm. Well, yes, I know. What, what happened to Mother's old circular rug that used to be in front of the TV? I don't think... <laughs> <laughs> I think we refuse to bring it. Yeah. Never mind, but it's probably still there. No, probably. The probably. New... <laughs> <laughs> That's probably why nobody's seen the new house owner. He was married. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Oh, here's one. If you work during the night, did you know that night workers feel more pain than those who work during the day? Yes, apparently. I was doing that this morning. Um, it was quite impressive, that one. It's it rather strange. Uh, because it's something to do with hands dunking freezing water, isn't it? Now, I'm, yeah. I'm, well, I must admit, I couldn't dunk my hand in freezing water at the moment, oh, definitely. Oh, God, no. Um, and it hurts 28% more after they'd work nights as opposed to the day shift. Now, the only thing I can put this down to is the fact that if you work in a day shift, you, your body is more inclined to be at its full level of, of running type of thing. So you, your heart beats normally, your, your circulation is normal, and this and the other. Working on night time, things have slowed down slightly because you, your body is sort of sat there saying, I mean, it's night, you know, let's just take things a bit steady, shall we? Yeah, and it's very know, difficult and, to and sleep and during the day as well. Yeah, mm. Mm. so I, that's about the only thing I can put it down to. Yeah.
here. Oh, well, that, yeah, lovely. Well, talking about well, um, in, in homes and in houses then, mm. a lot of people like to hoard things. A typical home contains over £1,000 worth of unused clutter. I'm not surprised, I always admit, yeah. What, yeah. Our, no, our house is like a warehouse, isn't it? Oh, I mean, yes. you don't need to go to the gym in our house. Just it's come in our house. I mean, no. you've got to leap over things, climb over things. Mm. Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we have actually got a working gym. Oh, yeah. Uh, the, it's the called problem the house. Is, yeah, the, the problem is we've also got an adventure park at the moment which is taking presents over it. Oh. And the president park is we. But, um, yeah, I, I can quite understand that houses have got quite a lot of money's worth of stuff which is just unused or um, put away in boxes and things like this, yeah. Yeah, well, it's like when people move, isn't it? Half the boxes just stay packed up in boxes and never mm. get used again. It makes me laugh, though, because I'll go into a room, for example, the kitchen, and it's clear. I say, oh, my God, mm. I can walk round. I don't have to do a belly flop well, it, to it, access it, it, a cupboard. And it'll be like the hallway at the moment. You can actually walk from the front uh, door into incredible. the kitchen. It's weird. Through the hallway, and you don't have to twist and turn or jump over anything. It's quite good. It's brilliant. Yeah. But the only problem with that is the following day when I go into the kitchen or the hallway, it's all back. And that's because I'm so doing something in another room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's back again. I know, yeah. Now, the, the thing is, now the survey itself was done from a home insurance company and it says more than half of us don't know the true value of our house, ah, household items. Mm. Um, including the clutter itself because you have to remember there's a lovely saying isn't it one man's wasted another man's um, gift or something or whatever it might be um, but it does say that if we sold all the clutter it could be worth up to a thousand quid yeah I know yeah that's yeah. roughly for 90% of us not for everybody no um, women are twice as likely to feel bad about sending unwanted stuff compared to men normally because it's a Christmas present that they just call them the dent so in case the other person sees it Mm. Um, but men are more nostalgic about getting rid of their belongings. Yeah. Oh. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I presume actually there could be slightly like right on that one, but yeah. Twenty percent of men feel an emotional connection to our clutter. <laughs> oh, why do I go around giving their kids good night? I know Every you do. Night. Yeah, I know. Yes. I've seen you. Yeah. Uh, compared to fifteen percent of women. 10% of us will be upset to get rid of it, while only 9% of women would feel the same. Hmm. Um, clothes, books and shoes are the most stashed away items. And uh, this was done on a poll of 2,000 people, evidently found that. It evidently was surveyed for 2,000 people. A third of us are guilty of keeping old VHS and tape cassettes. Um, I don't think I have now, but I did have. I used to have boxes of them. I think that's why you think, well, I won't throw that away, because Sod's Law says I'll throw it away, mm. and tomorrow I'll need it. If I tell you, the silly thing is, I'm now the other way around, because we have a, a VHS recorder, but mm. no tips. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. always the way, isn't it? I told you, you throw it away, and then you'll find out you need it. Oh, of course, yeah, yeah. Mm. The, the top places for clutter are the loft, the spare room, all our rooms are spare, mm. <laughs> um, a cupboard, the garage, and under the bed. Yeah. yeah. Uh, one advice I would say if you've got a barn or a mm. shed. Yeah. <laughs> if you put your furniture in there, you think, I'll oh, just store it there for now, you probably won't ever be able to bring it back in again, especially if you've got mice. <laughs> yeah. Right, lovely. Right, okay, then, uh, that's because uh, do you want to float back now to desk three? Yeah, what, what was that to remember, though, you know, on that last item? That sometimes your clutter may not be quite as good as some of what you think. Yeah. Look at the vase that was sold last week. What, ours? No. Oh, okay, fair enough then. Okay, let's have a little bit of uh, Susie Quatter and Devil Gate Drive. Ah. Yes. Oh no! Oh dear. Oh dear. It appears to have stuck. This is Croft UK Radio and North Highlands and Islands Radio, your distant local radio stations, nhir.co.uk and croftukradio.co.uk. Right, uh, do you enjoy swimming? What do you? Pardon? 
Love it. Oh, love it, yeah. Uh, Lulworth Cove last October. Yeah, I never oh. actually went in there. No, and only, only because Izzy the dog wouldn't come in No, because you're scared of water. Oh, Me? No, oh, Izzy the dog. Izzy the dog, yeah. yeah. No, it was very nice. Oh. I highly recommend it. Yeah, so we'll be doing it again shortly. Um, right, um, more than nine million adults in England can't swim. Really? We're an island, for God's sake. Well, yeah, especially with Brexit as well, because we'll be pulled out further into the Atlantic Ocean, won't we? Well, yeah, after uh, March right next year. Uh, a report shows that 20% of men and 22% of women can't swim. The highest number is over 65 years old. It says that top, well, although about two and a half million people want to learn to swim, they're not quite sure how to go about it. Water. <laughs> I know, yes. Mm. A lot of people are complaining, though, that if they want to go to their local swimming pool, it's just way too expensive and a bit of a rip-off. I, I know, uh, I think it's a little down in Bournemouth. Like, isn't it about five quid or something if you want to go there? No, it's not too bad. I've seen worse. Have you seen worse? Yeah. yeah. Mind you, I don't like it when you're packed in there. I'm, I'm, I like to No, just, uh, I, I prefer thanks to open swim somewhere. Yes, good morning to the sea, definitely. Mm. Yes. Right, and depending on what age you are is the best time time to learn things right um the best time to pick up a second language hmm. is between the ages of seven and eight i always thought it was from birth sort of thing if people spoke to the kids in bilingual then they, they, they picked it up straight away yeah. as they do normal english like you know mummy mama daddy daddy so mm. sort of yeah. but um yeah, yeah okay yeah Right then, um, your, your best, your brain is at its optimum at 18 years old. Yeah, because it's like a sponge and you just it takes is. everything yeah. in and deciphers what yeah. it wants to know. Yeah, so then you start on the downhill after that. Mm. Right. And then uh, you sponge everything in and it gets thrown out of the ears. It certainly does, yes. Mmm. Right. right. Best, the most attractive, people think they're most attractive when they're about 23. Really? Hmm. Life satisfaction always also comes in at 23. Hmm. Yeah. Let me see, what was I doing at 23? What were you uh, doing at 23? Uh, yeah. 23. Oh. 23. I'd have been, I'd have been a salesman in the 80s. Thing. Yeah, I think. Hmm. Or whatever. Yeah. No, I was probably a sales director. I was director at 23. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, probably life satisfaction was best for me at 23. Hmm. Seems Even job wise. Yes. Oh. It seems a long time ago, doesn't it? Oh, it does. And people yeah. used to say, how old are you? And you would say, I'm 23. Mm. Uh, 20 years ago for me. Yeah, oh, yeah. so oh, well, soon be popping off. That was it. Yeah, that was a quick life. Uh, right, 25, your muscles reach their peak. They stay on track yeah. then for the next 10 to 15 years. 35, 40, yeah, probably, yep. Yeah, then you start going downwards again. Yep. Yeah. The age that you are most likely to settle down, on average, is 26. Hmm. Yeah. Math skills. Maths. Oh, yeah. like maths. Uh, yeah. Best you, when you're at your best for maths. Did you know it's age 50? Hmm. Mm. Two thirds of people over 65 are the happiest they are with their body. And for mental well being, it's the age group between 82 to 85 years old. Yeah, that goes on past their uh, financial stuff, doesn't it? Which is what they've been saying for years now. If you bought a house when you were, were young and you're now 80, you, you probably paid something like a copper in your pocket for it. It's also, um, yes, that's true. Um, mental well-being is meant to be at your best as well. Mm. I, I'm not sure about that, to be honest. My, well, my mother, well, she's 86 now, and she's never been as miserable in her life as she is right now, thanks no. to being in, trapped in a care home well, that she true. chose to go into, by the way. We didn't put her in Yeah, no, this is true. Um, and again, it goes back to you, you the person, the individual person. Yeah. Um, if they've got the health and they've got the freedom and they've got the movement and the, and the, the money to be able to do anything they want to do type of thing, then, yeah, I can understand where that comes from. Uh, if it's general, then I think I would just feel the figure, but there we go. Hmm, yeah, yeah. Well, just um, anything there, then on uh, desk six, what the pickles? Well, um, struggling pubs, which is um, a little bit of a shame, but it's the, it's the ongoing saga that pubs have, uh, since there's no smoking ban, have been declining in, in multiple numbers. And um, apparently they're now shooting at 19 a week. Now, that, that's actually, I thought that stayed up because I'm sure. Last time we were down south, there was a report out saying there were 25 a week. But I could be wrong on that one. 
um, between July and December last year, 460 um, pubs called last order for the very final time. Um, the closure rates even worse between January and June, when he reached 525 who shut the door for the last basic time. Over the year as a whole, 985 pubs have shut. That equals to 18.9 every week. I'm surprised there's only left. I mean, roughly how many pubs are there in this oh, country? There's thousands. There must be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, here. Campaigners, apparently, urgent, want urgent action to cut the perfect storm, as they're now calling it, of different financial burdens on the locals. The campaign for real ale blames the closure on triple whammy of beer duty, rapidly rising business rates and VAT. Brexit? <laughs> yeah, nothing to do with Brexit. The, uh, the campaign for real ale, I've done that one, with a third of the cost of a pint now made up of duty, Cameron wants um, the government to reveal the way beer is taxed. Oh. And uh, this, the, the actual figures themselves were um, uh, devised by Cameron's What Pub Online Bar Guide. Yeah. And apparently it's the southeast that's the hardest hit in the second half of 2017 with 62 closures, followed by the northwest on 59. It's a shame, really. Yes. Mm. Uh, uh. The thing is, though, have people stop using pubs nowadays? I mean, it, it used to be the meeting place. I mean, let's face it, if, if you were going out for a night out, I mean, I can remember it when you were working there sort of thing. If you were arranging to, to go somewhere, you would sit there and say, right, fine, let's all meet down at so-and-so, you know, which would be the local pub or whatever, mm-hmm. or a pub near to where you were going. And you go in there and have a couple of pints and you go on to your, your destination. Um, also, the thing is, nowadays, if, if you're going home from work and you think, oh, we've been for a quick pint, and you go in, you're looking at five, six, seven quid for a pint in some places. Yeah. Not everywhere, I mean, yeah. but in, in some places, five, six, seven pound a pint. And you think, well, if you do that seven days a week, that's quite a bit of money out of your wage packet. Yes, it is. Yes, you're right there. And yeah. let's face it, how many people just go into a pub and say, I'm just going to have one on the way home? I'll whip in, first pint, plug it, goes down and think, I'll just have another quick one for the road. Oh, dodgy. Yeah, no, a lot of people are walking home as well, remember. But, um, yeah, it, it, it's, it can add up to quite a, a vast amount of money. And if you, you meet friends in there, I mean, when I used to go into pubs, I used to walk in, there maybe be four or five people at the, the, the side of the bar that I knew. I used to walk in and say, I'll have a pint, please, mate, and, and whatever these lot are having. Now you, you know, just talk to them on fart book. Yeah, well, well, you know, then it would have been maybe five or six pints to buy. You know, five pound a pint, let's say. That, that's 30, 35 pound. Yeah. You know, that's just for one round of drinks. I used to go out with a ten in my pocket and have a night out. Aye, yeah. You oh, know, well. it, it, it's... Mm. So, yeah, a lot easier to do with pricing. And, um... <laughs> also, I mean, a pub is no longer a pub, is it? I mean, when you look at a pub nowadays, it, it's more a restaurant than it is a pub. And it, it's it's also more somewhere you take the kids to on a weekend. They've yeah. all got playgrounds in them and, and you know, stuff like this. But, I, I, yeah, I do think a lot has to be done about the pricing. I mean, personally, the, the pricing of, of booze in a pub and booze in a supermarket is totally so undivided, it's unbelievable. I wonder what would happen if you walked into one of these places, Ed. You sat down with a group of you with your rucksack. Hmm. And then you brought out your own drinks. I, t- I take it they wouldn't be too happy with uh, you. No, you'd be evicted straight away no. because you're not allowed to take your own drinks. No, in. Uh, well, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, the, the licensing law says that you're not allowed to do that. No, uh, oh, well, never mind. Even though I do know somebody who took a baby's bottle full of sherry to a pub. Who? My mother. <laughs> oh, you think that's bad? Right. My mother, well, but both of them, both my parents, used to go into Sainsbury's restaurant at Castle Point. <laughs> 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 a cup of tea uh. and they would take their own tea bag with mm. them and all they got was the hot water from the, the tea. They get a discount. Cap, cap, cap. <laughs> they get a discount for bringing their own tea bags. Yeah. Well, I don't think that really the staff would have been too pleased had they known what my parents were up to. Mm. Uh. <laughs> Bless. I mean, back in them days, you're only probably thinking that a cup of tea, you know, like they give you those little silver pots, oh, don't they? Yeah, so you've got yeah. about two cups per mm. silver pot. It wasn't that expensive, was not it? <laughs> Just over a pound back then. And no, 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 we're taking our own tea bags, mm. aren't we, Barbara? Mm. Oh, yes, I'll be doing that. Oh, no, yes. Oh, my oh, God. I'm really, honestly. 
Alright, okay. Um, I want to tell you a story. Oh, my Bygraves. Yes, exactly. Well done, yes. Right. Who said just like that? Uh, Toby Cooper. It certainly did. Yes. Uh, what a gay day. Was it? Um, Lavi Grayson? Yes, it was. Oh, very good. Yes, well done. Um, Laura, Laura laughs. Still a black. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yes. Um, right, who said don't mention the war? Oh, that was him out with Dad's army. Uh, no, it wasn't, actually. No. Not, not it, Clive Dunn? No. It was Basil Fawlty. Oh, God, it was, yes, yes. No. Mm. Now it'll be don't mention Brexit. Oh, that's true, uh, yeah. Um, it's, the Muppets. Yeah, it's good night from me and it's good night from him. That was too Ronnie's. It certainly was, yes, well done. Uh, boom, boom. Boom, boom. Oh, Basil Rush. It was, mm. yes. Uh, you dirty old man. As Steptoe's son. Oh, well done. Um, yeah. I mean, I forgot to call him. Yeah, you're doing very well. Harold, Harold. Steptoe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right. I don't believe it. That's uh, Richard. Oh, God, you even... Oh, well done. Mm. God, Richard, Richard, Richard. I've got a second name. Well, it was Victor Meldrew. Yeah, Victor Meldrew, and yeah. He was called Richard Wilson. That's him, yeah. I think he's popped off. Um... I think, yeah, actually, yeah. Mm. Okay, right, nice one for you. Nice to see you, to see you nice. Lucy! Yes. Right, uh, that's another fine mess you've got me into. Stan Laurel. Certainly was. Um, it's all done in the best possible taste. Oh, um, oh God, I can see him saying that, Kathleen Lewis. With no, the well, beard. Well. Um, Started off in radio. Kenny Everett. Kenny Everett, of course he was, yes. Yes. Yeah. Right, um, I'm free. John Inman. Yes. Mm, well done. Um, oh, Matron. It was one of the Carry On team. It was, um, yes. Oh, good. No, Kenneth Williams. That's him, yeah. yeah. Um, I shall say this only once. Uh, I'm going to pass on that one. I know, well, I can see him saying it again, but I can't think who he's or his character. No, it's a she. It was a low, a low. Michelle. Oh, of course it was, yes, yes. Yes, right. Mm. Very difficult one, this is. Ooh, Betty. Hmm, now let me think. Could that be someone like Frank Spencer? It was, yes, well done. Yes. I have a cunning plan. Oh, um. It wasn't Gordon Brown, no, if that's any um, help. Um, no, go on. It was Baldrick from Black Hat. That's right, yes, yes. Yes, right. Okay, then. Um, you'll like it, not a lot, but you'll like it. <laughs> Paul Daniels. It certainly was, yes. Oh, well done. I'm sorry, say that again. I never saw that. I never miss them. Never saw what? Well, questions. Oh, no one made them up. Oh, that's all right. Yeah, yeah not bad on me, am I, really? No. Yeah. Did you know the average person spends a thousand quid on new clothes a year? No, I didn't. We apparently shop for new gear every two months. Um, but leave a third of our new gear hanging in the wardrobe and never wear it. Oh, dear. Well, ours is hanging up on the landing. We moved them out because of the mice. Actually, yeah, when, when you think about it, it... it, it it's probably about right, is that? Because you tend to go around these new shops and you think, oh, I'm going in for a jacket for so and so. And you, you get a jacket, then you think, well, I like that one as well, though. I might wear that one as well. I'll take them both or whatever. Well, we had to throw a few jumpers uh, out, didn't we, because okay, of the yes, mice? Yes, we did, yes. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I can see quite easily see how it's done. I mean, I think I've got a, a, a jacket hung up on there, which I've only worn once. <laughs> In fact, actually, I've got two, three jackets of them there, which I've only worn once. Uh, have you checked? It's not been a point no. of mice. <laughs> There's 95 items hanging up in average in a woman's wardrobe. <laughs> and apparently you only wear 43 of them. Which is probably about right as well. Um, in fact, women say they never wear 60% of their clothes, sorry, 6% of their clothes, and 7% have been worn just once. That's normally the time when they leave the tags on and go out and wear it, go oh, to a party, yeah. get it to a bill and send it back. Mm. I know, yeah. On average, mm. own 27 more pieces of clothing than men. <laughs> 
and tell them I see it. Yes, that's right, fine. The top reasons <laughs> women cite for regularly wearing their most worn clothes are that they clean well in the washing machine and they can go a long line between washes and that gives them the most confidence. Yeah. One of the annoying things, though, actually, in all seriousness, it in fact happened just before we got married, about three days beforehand. We bought something and the <laughs> stupid shop left the security plastic this thing is true, on it. Yes, yeah. And you can't get it off yourself. You have tr- you tried in the past and you succeeded, didn't you? But we mm. had to drive five hours to go back to the shop. We did, yes. Get this yes. wretched thing off. Yeah. Mm. I think there was a stat I had last week on the telly, which I, I, I forgot about, I just noticed that one. And, um,. When do you consider clothing to be finished, other than having holes in it torn, ripped? <laughs> you know what I'm going to say? Yes. <laughs> but when, when, when... <laughs> No, oh, I don't matter. I'll give up. No, no, sorry. Carry on. I'll be good. Sorry. When, <laughs> when do I consider clothes to have had it, is really yeah. what you're saying, isn't yes. it? When they've probably... No, when they faded the colour or they've started to fray a bit, maybe. Right. I don't know. Now then, yeah, faded and, and fray. too fat. Yeah, now, well, faded and uh, colour loss <laughs> uh, is one thing which was mentioned in the, um, the survey last week. But it was also said clothes were thrown away by the amount of times they'd been washed. How many times do you think, on average, a person washes the clothes and then gets to the end of the life with it and throws it out? I've never really thought about it, really. Well, no, I, I didn't see them until this was on last week. I thought, I thought about it because the answer was 20. Hmm. And you tend to sit there and say, well, I can understand that on certain items. Yeah. But hmm. surely that cannot be everyday items. But it was. It turned out to be everyday items. Right. And you think, well, 20 washes isn't long. It's not really, no. <coughs> no, when you think some stuff you can only wear... Once, yeah. technically. I mean, you buy a white... Like then, shirts, you only wear it once and then wash it. Then it's in the shower. In the, in yeah, the shower. I mean, in, the, in the washing machine. I was quite yeah. horrified when I went out to buy a white shirt to to go with my suit. Uh, because the other ones had got <coughs> past it. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I had to pay actually sixty quid for a shirt. What? Mm. Now, admittedly, it does feel nice when you wear it because it's a really nice thick cotton, but well, 60 quid for a shirt? Yes. I think mm. I don't do about washing it 20 times a day. Wear it 20 times. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> right, OK, um, never mind. All oh, good fun. Uh, mm. Right. Okay. Oh, I like this next one, then. Who would you most like to have a meal with? Oh, God. Um, who would I like to have a meal with? Yes. Somebody intelligent, interesting. Um, probably Jerry McClarkson. Oh, yeah, I'd, I'd go hmm. with that one. Yeah, right. Um, some people have said Sir David Attenborough, Barack Obama, Nelson Mandela, David Bowie, Adele, Prince Harry, what? Albert Einstein. I don't know. Uh, no, hey, buddy, we're going for a meal. Where are we off? McDonald's. Yeah, um, Einstein. William Shakespeare, Elvis Presley, John Lennon. That's just some... Mm. Right, OK, here's another one for you, then, talking about who you would like to have a meal with. Right. <clears throat> I don't try and be serious. Um, who out of these five would you invite to dinner? Most. Okay. Right, Ian Duncan Smith. Mm-hmm. Kim Kardashian. Mm-hmm. Jeremy Corbyn. Mm-hmm. Oh, du- David. Duke of Edinburgh. You're going to get to David, I it? am, David yeah. Cameron. Yeah. Oh, it'd have to be David. It would have to be oh, David that Cameron. Group, I think it would have to be David Cameron. Yes. Um, even though I would like Jeremy Corbyn as well, because I think he'd be very, very interesting. Mm. I'd love to talk about manhole covers for an hour or two. Well, yeah. yeah. If, if we did bring David, I'm then... I'm below them. Could I ask him if he could bring his mate with him? <laughs> you could ask him, yeah. He mm. I mean, probably wouldn't bring him. Well, you don't get one without the other, don't forget. Mm, yeah. yeah. Yes. You like that question, though, don't you? What question? The one you just asked. Yes. Yes. Very nice. Mm. Very good. Second time you've asked it. <laughs> Don't say this. I've got a great section here of who you'd like to have a meal with. <laughs> <laughs> No, it wasn't. No, thank goodness for that. Oh, yes. 
All right, okay then. Uh, what time is it? It's coming up for 11.40. Uh, do you want to just float back to desk three then, Tortoise Pickles? I can do that, yes. Right, this one um, is actually a request. Um, otherwise, well, no, I almost say what I'm going to say there. Um, this is um, a request from Joanna Wagner. And it's for Sarah Louise Jennings, who is 54 years old today. And apparently this is one of her favourite songs. Oh, happy birthday! Yes, so happy birthday to uh, Sarah. Yeah, who, um, um, yeah, right. And it's uh, Nat King Cole, Unforgettable. UK Radio is on Facebook and Twitter. You can find us at facebook.com forward slash Croft UK Radio or you can follow us on Twitter at Croft UK Radio. We're also on Skype, Croft UK Radio. This is Croft UK Radio, your distant local radio station, nhir.co.uk and croftukradio.co.uk. Yes, good morning. I'm Rebecca Pickles and the Blow Up Character 12 Des Pickles is here as well. Yep. Yeah, we've also got the producer of the show currently in the studio moaning. Mm. That is Izzy the dog. Um, and the Cock of the North station manager, White Poodle Rascal the dog. I, I don't know where he is at the minute, do you? Um, I don't know. Oh, yeah, he's around. Oh, he's here. And Scruffy the dog, black and grey, with a beard. Ooh, oof. Yes, easy. Uh, right, uh, did you have anything there on desk 11, or do you just want to back up and go to bed? Well, apparently it's official now that um, the bald is the new black. The what? Bald is the new black. Right, yes, mm. OK, lovely. A mm. new study shows that the effortless bald head looks middle-aged men have been sporting for years. Um, is now apparently considered an attractive trait. Yeah. Um, what once signified genetic hair loss and ageing now signifies... A wise, strong, and sexy hunk of a man. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there you go. What happens if you're female? A bit odd, I would think. Mm. Yeah. Oh, well done. Yeah, that's really good. Right. Eating crusts give you curly. Yeah, curl. According to your parents, yes, carrots yes. will help you see, see the them. dark. Yes, spinach will make you... Strong like Popeye! Yeah, even though none of them are true. Hmm. Right, uh, right. So, uh, 7 out of 14... No, 14% of us admit telling children <coughs> other things like runner beans will make you run faster. Oh, I never got told that. No, I didn't, actually. No. Just over 1 in 10 parents have said to their children green food would turn them into a superhero. Really? Yes. Yeah. Would anybody be that silly and stupid to believe that? Yes. <laughs> yes, I did. I mean, I, my mother got me to eat vegetables that way and it worked. I said mm-hmm. to my mother, I was about, probably about seven at the time, so, Mother, when will I be able to fly? And she actually said to me, when you're 15. <laughs> Oddly enough, it didn't work. But never mind. No, mm. no. Yeah. If you eat a little cheese, do you become a super mouse? Oh, God. Oh, I'd have lived to regret that one, wouldn't I, wouldn't yeah. back in them days? Uh, my, uh, someone said that their dad... I think this was come from Kelly. Yeah, mm. thank you for that, Kelly. My dad used to tell me, if I... Sp- if I swallowed an apple pip, a tree would grow out the top of yeah, my head. Yeah, funny enough, I seem to remember being told that when I was a kid as well. Come here. It's all right, I'm having problems with Izzy the dog again. Yeah. Yes. Up, 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 up. up. Is she there? Yeah. Well, I know she's there. Come here, Charlie, get up here. Yes. I do apologise about this, it's Izzy the dog. Yeah. She just couldn't hold it in for another ten more minutes, could she? No, no she had to start now. Never mm-hmm. mind, that's all part of uh, Izzy the dog for you. Yeah, lovely. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 you know, I mean, carrots and stuff like that was a, a thing. And every time the mother bared the toast, oh, when you got to eat that, it'll curl your hair. What was uh, if you didn't want curly hair? Well, that was also true. I never actually thought about that when I was a kid. Mm. I didn't really want curly hair, sort of thing. What you see there, they, oh, what if it does? It's one of those things that puts a doubt in your head. I wonder if it does. Oh, I suppose, yeah. yeah. And, yeah, you start yeah, Friday's fish day. I don't really want fish. Oh, you want to have fish? It'll make you brainy. Yeah. Mm. Did, it, did it work? Um, I 
don't think so, no. Oh, well. Yeah, never mind. But I didn't feel any more brain on a Friday than what I did Monday to Thursday. No. Mm. Not to worry. Mm. Things could be worse. Mind you, they never told you, did they, at the time about when you eat, eat apples? They never said, oh, eat the apple because it's got cyanide in it. Yeah, no, that's true, yeah. 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 My, we, my mm, yes. Sorry, we used to foster, and uh, we had a young lad with us called David, and uh, he was, I think, about eight or nine years old. And he, he came to us one weekend, you know, type of thing, and he was while his mum was in hospital, and uh, we had him for, I think it was a week. And... <laughs> He used to have a banana every tea time. Well, I didn't go anywhere then. No. And he, he, he used to love the banana. He'd never had a banana and he loved them. I used to say, can I have another one? Loved, no, 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 because too many bananas don't do you a lot of good. You know, sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. You know, then, just like talking to my dad one day, and I was in the room, right? He said, I said, Graham, I said, what? I said, um, have you ever been in David's room? I said, a couple of times, yeah. I've been, you know, playing games or something. And he said, you have know, seen any banana skins, have you? <laughs> no. All oh, right. You know, I just, oh, I just can't understand where he puts them. And he gave him a banana and he said, I said, well, if you, you can eat it down here, you know, you'll have to take it to your room. And he said, all oh, right, thank you. And he sat on the couch and he ate the skin as well. Oh, dear. I mm. can't be good. No. Mm. Yeah, so we, it, it, it took me more than about 20 minutes or so to explain to him, you don't eat the skin, you peel it like this. It's always a dirty, you better not look there. <laughs> he actually enjoyed eating the he skin. He actually enjoyed eating the skin. Oh. But I do know somebody else as well. Oh. Uh, moving on quite a few years, and I was down in Leeds, walking down Leeds High Street, uh, after going shopping and stuff. And um, it's always the, 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 the stall there selling the nuts. Yeah. Not the nice hot nuts. Oh. Roast chestnuts. And he was doing it the traditional way, over the fire in the embers. I said, Jackie, I'll come up, have some roast chestnuts. Yeah, okay, so it goes there. And yes, three bags of roast chestnuts. And uh, one for me, one for him, and one for his wife. We're walking down the road, right, and then I scumpled my bag of right through it in the bin, Craig, scumpled it up through it in the bin. And Andrea at the time, walking behind, said, You're so finished. I said, Yeah. God, you said, You're quick. I said, Yeah, it's only don't get many in a bag. I know, said, but it takes ages to crunch them. Mm-hmm. And, and me and our kid just sort of looked at each other and thought, crunch them? What do you mean, crunch them? And she was literally eating the shell as well. Oh, really? Mm. Oh, dear. Yeah. I mean, they must have tasted awful. Mm. You get a little bit of you know, uh, uh. Well, I used to eat the eggshells as well when my mother gave me hard-boiled eggs. Well, eggshells are good for you. Oh, she told me the opposite. She said I shouldn't eat them. Mm, no, oh, no, you can't do that. Eggshells are good for you. Ah, ah, right then, um, uh, aeroplanes, uh, tons of gold They're fell, yeah, tons of gold fell from the sky as a cargo plane went wrong on takeoff. Oh. More than 170 gold bars oh, cool. popped out because the hatch flew open. Now, how come we're never in that area when something happens? <coughs> well, I don't think you would want to be in Russia at the moment, would you? Well, why not? Why not? You've been to Russia, haven't you? I have, You yes. enjoyed yourself, didn't you? Oh, I did, loved it. Yes, yeah. it was carrying £265 million pounds worth of platinum, gold and diamonds, and the hatch just opened, just like that. Mm. And it sent them all back down onto the ground again. Uh, it doesn't say if anybody picked the damn things up. Mind you, it'd be rather painful if it landed on your head, wouldn't it? It would rather, yeah. Mm. Uh, do you have a quick one, then, before we... Um... Yeah, OK, then. <laughs> Um, hoodies have apparently topped the list of clothing fellas looked daft in once they became middle age. Tracksuit bottoms came second in a poll, followed by football shirts. Also, pant wear white socks and baseball bats. Uh, hats, sorry. <laughs> bats. Freud and a slip there. Um, leather jackets, skinny jeans and speedos. The findings emerged after men over 40 were asked what gear looked unsuitable for their age. T-shirts bearing the name of bands, flip-flops and body warmers are also out. Um, a quarter said they were um, worried younger men at work looked more stylish than them, so they tried to keep up with them. And oh, right, uh, right. the, the, the what not to law, no, what not to wear official list is at the top tracksuit bottoms followed by leather jackets, football shirts, white socks, wide fronts, flip flops, gillets. What's a gillet? I don't know. Don't wear them. I've no idea. I don't. Oh. I have to look it up. I'm, I'm, I can't. <laughs> singlets. Think. What singlets? I don't know. Is that somebody wanted? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, 
bumbags, oh, how are they? Are? Um, hoodies, skinny jeans, shell suits, ill-fitting shirts, beanie hats, tracksuit tops, band t-shirts, white trainers, baseball caps, leather trousers and comedy ties. Oh, bummer. That means all my ties have got to go in the bin. Nah, that's fine. <laughs> Um, on, um, 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 where are we? Band t-shirts. Now, I must admit, I don't tend to see why anybody would want to advertise a band in the 40s. No, you'd at least want royalties from them, wouldn't you, if you were advertising yeah, them on your t-shirts? The, the thing is, they just look so out of place. You see them on TV in the morning, and stuff like that, where they're coming to do a, um, a, a spot answering questions or something like that. And there they are wearing a, a, a Led Zeppelin t-shirt, something like that, and you're thinking, yeah, okay. You probably were into Led Zeppelin when you were hmm, 16, 17, 20s. So like that, but really 40 years old and you sat there saying, I'm a heavy metal follower. You never see anybody wearing a Doris Day or Vera Lynn <coughs> Dolly Parton t-shirt, do you? No, this is true, you don't. Mm. Mm. No. Yeah. And did you know that we spent around £130 on going on a date? Yeah. That is more than twice as much as French and Italian counterparts. Oh. Yeah. oh, well, that'll stop next year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the average total for both people covers costs such as transport, clothes, cosmetics, entertainment, food and drink. The study found dating contributes £5.89 billion pound a year to the economy. Um, and apparently Spain is the next dearest at £55. Pound. In France, Germany, Italy, it costs around 46 quid. How lovely. Mm. So there you go. Yes. Yeah. Oh, oh, jolly good stuff. Right, OK, then. Uh, we are back tomorrow at nine o'clock. We um, certainly are, yes. So what would you like to play yes, out with? Even though we did Sorry. say that we wouldn't be here on Tuesday, uh, change of plans say that, yes, we are here. So, yeah. so yes, we are here bright and early, sparkling, bully as normal. In other words, we'd have just got out of bed. Yeah. Mm. yeah. yeah. Or we'd still be in bed and just wear a headset. Well, we we, do, we do know a couple of people that were doing the dishes at yes, the same we time we're do. doing yes. a radio show, don't we? And definitely, yeah. They, they, they were employed by us to actually do radio shows. And we were sat listening to it one morning and, and you could hear them washing up. <laughs> know, it's so funny. Yeah. It was, it was comical, really. But, um, hmm. Yeah. All right, then, so have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Uh, what would you like to play out with, then, uh, Tortoise Pickles? Well, we're going to go with a little bit of the old Abba scene, so that goes back to the 70s. And um, just remember, don't resent getting old. Many are denied the privilege. So, till tomorrow, tacky bye. <laughs> Croft UK Radio and the North Highlands and Islands Radio Morning Show. Brought to you by Rebecca Pickles and Graham Pickles. For more information on our radio shows and productions, please visit our website, croftukradio.co.uk or you can email us at production at croftukradio.co.uk. 